Hey everybody, uh, this is a our post C2E2 podcast. Where it's a little post. We're actually recording this on Monday the 5th. Happy, happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. I'm going to Taco Bell. <laughs> May the 5th be with you. God, um. Fifth of what? In any case, we all had a great time. <laughs> so there was time. a panel. Yeah. Uh, it was C2E2. about Star Wars, right? <laughs> I'm, at least one of them was, but not the one we, we put on. We are here, uh, Chip and Ironicus, and Voidburger, and Geop, and Kamok. Everybody Bringing up the rear in a revving car just outside. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. We have an escape plan ready. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but My vehicle got away. <laughs> I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna peel out the whole time. <laughs> but we thought it would be a good idea to uh, talk about our experiences, reminisce for all the people who couldn't make the show, uh, especially the panel in particular. But you know, our our entire time. So do we want to start it from like? Thursday when people started showing up? Sure. I mean, if we wanted to start when uh, any of us got to Chicago, I'd have to go back to college. But yeah, Thursday. Mm, many Thursday years ago. ago. <laughs> uh, I got in and I took the train and my first impression of Chicago was a very, very angry homeless man yelling at everybody enough so that the train had to stop and wait for the police. And then when he was informed that the police were actually coming, he went, fuck that shit, and he left. And then the doors went, <laughs> bing bong. <laughs> the whole thing was planned out so he would leave. So it wasn't really such a hot first impression. <laughs> but then you saw a gorgeous Alexander Calder sculpture right in the middle of Federal Plaza. So yeah. it's something. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were going to be it. And then you saw a gorgeous General Ironicus waiting for you. And no, we all know <laughs> what I look like now. I can't, I can't keep up the line. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, it's just, I'm not photogenic. <laughs> I'm not photogenic either. Is anyone here photogenic? I don't think any of us are photogenic. Yeah, you're, you're That's the reason we company. talk over video games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a comment actually in the video that I was editing, and uh, was someone in the crowd was just like, "You guys asked if you were like, oh no, we're not very photogenic," and one person was like, "You're all pasty and white." <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! And, like you guys are like, well, fuck you. What the hell did you expect? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you that was you, Voidberg. I didn't. I, I couldn't put that in there. I but don't uh, remember. Oh man. <laughs> Someone was hella snarky. Anyway. Then we all tried to surprise Chip off the train, but he saw us coming, so it was not a surprise at all. I spotted you from very far away. <laughs> well, so most I of tried. us are pretty tall and, and <laughs> striking, so. Hmm. What did we eat that night? I don't remember. Was that the Mexican joint that night? Yes, that's when we went to La Cantina on South that was Michigan. Good. We that was did good. a lot of things on South Michigan out of uh, convenience. I miss those margaritas. They were very good. They were pretty good. What were they handing out? They were handing shots of something out. Uh, was it Malibu Jameson? something? No, yeah, it was some Malibu promo thing. Yeah. We got free shots from ladies in a uniform of sorts. Mm -hmm. So that was a fun night. They wanted us to take pictures with the shots, and we were like, no thanks. You don't want pictures of this gang. We're too weird. <laughs> yeah. We're just white and pasty. Um, <laughs> it was uh, a shame that everybody got in so slowly. We didn't have much time just to all hang out together, which mm -hmm. I think is a shame because those were the best parts. I know. Mm -hmm. We yeah. also had a bunch of work to do, which yeah. was unavoidable, but... <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of cut into a lot of the, the hangout time stuff, so. The last three days, basically. <laughs> and, like, Friday. Friday, I was up till and three Friday. in the morning. Yeah. It was brutal. Yep. Keeping Ironicus and his waifu up until three in the morning, because they have a very small apartment. <laughs> For now. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, let's just skip to the show proper now that people have arrived. Um, what all did we do? We didn't actually do much as far as programming went. Yeah, we uh, didn't. Last year it was nothing but panels, and this year we only went to a couple. There was a good handful uh, of things I wish I could have gotten to, but I didn't want to just drag everybody around. And by the end, everyone was sick. So, <laughs> except me. <laughs> yeah, you never the, got sick. I was the only person who didn't get sick, and I think I have the shittiest immune system. So that that's like a borderline miracle that that didn't happen. I didn't get sick. Second year running, we watched oh, right. in awkward disbelief at the uh, stand-up stand-up uh, show. 
<laughs> oh lord was that the first day or the second day that was friday i was friday uh, because that's when right. g-up found us uh, that's right after he arrived off of his flight and hotel check-in mm-hmm. uh, oh god that was, that they show. had a good guy or two so stand up stand up <laughs> last year was pretty great because it was a lot of people being pretty bad for the most part at doing stand up. Oh, they were terrible. But <laughs> you were it was just like it was just bad jokes, but not things that for the most part. There was that one guy who was like, "My family's racist, so I'm racist too." But <laughs> but other than that, but it's okay it cuz I know who to blame. <laughs> I will not break the cycle of hate. Not on my watch. <laughs> Leave for my kids. This is my inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> status quo thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> but other than that last year it was just people doing bad jokes and failing at it and this year it was like people flopping at doing bad jokes but also offending everyone at the same time but everyone nice. was still laughing at the junk yeah, and i don't well, know why yeah it was like there was the standard go-to that really stood out were the the jewish references and jokes there were a lot of those i noticed yeah mm-hmm. But it's like, it's cool because I'm Jewish. Like, that was like the tint on it. But it's like, but you're mm. still being, doing it, the thing. <laughs> where, yeah, I mean, how do I know that we're all Jewish and we're laughing at it so it's cool? I don't know that. <laughs> so, so it was Family Guy Live is what you're saying? Sort of. Uh, it was, well, it was, it was painful. It, it was basically that, like, everybody was pretty bad except for one guy who we met later in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, he sounds no, directly good and out of context. We, yeah, <laughs> I ran into him. Well, not literally, but no, he was a yeah. cool guy. He was the one in a tie. He's the yeah. blonde guy who who actually wore a tie. Looked mm-hmm. pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, it was the the final two people were the worst, I think, mm. because they were they had a good stage presence, but everything they did was just bad it was it was the uh, a lot of the people when they ran out of material just went to the audience and made fun of the audience and the guy in the sweatpants in the front row when you're when you're only doing five to ten minutes come on you can't you can't already out of stuff two minutes i'm out what what if he pre-prepped all the sweatpants stuff just playing the odds that there would be a sweatpants guy Uh, because really this guy this guy gets it (laughs) yeah that was the thing once (laughs) once that dude ran out of stuff it was just this guy gets it or like looking at the guy near the titanfall booth going that guy's got crazy murder eyes well he did did he i couldn't see him i couldn't see him yeah and then like i I saw them they were they were pretty crazy yeah. And then, Seriously. like, he pointed out an a American McGee's Alice cosplayer because she oh. actually had crazy contacts in to make her eyes look crazy. And he was like, oh, she's got crazy eyes, too. I'd still fuck her. And the whole audience was like, ha, 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 ha. And she was just like, teehee, I'm sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the Which lady... Which is for the best. Uh. Yeah. The, the lady before that dude was just like, Talk, did some joke where it was like, boy, nothing's better than doing this thing and this thing and third again, furious finger banging. And it's like she looked into the, into the audience and like there was some mom with like her 14 year old son there. No, I think before there. that, she actually oh, established that. that there was a 14 year old in the audience yes. and then said like, well, you're going to learn some stuff or whatever. Yeah. And then she got mad, took her son away. And then she was like, oh, are you mad? And then she was like, oh, don't worry. You'll be doing that soon. And it was like really pissing the kid's mom off. And then it was like this really awkward 30 second thing of her just like talking to the mom like are you still mad? on the stage like are you mad uh, are you are you mad are you really mad you're really mad okay well i'm sorry anyways <laughs> finger banging are you bored are you are, are you really bored are you, are you really <laughs> is bored it, is this awkward is this like really awkward do you want to die just a little just a little bit have you already died just a little bit <laughs> uh oh that's also where we had our first fan encounter um Either before or after Giop showed up, I can't remember. It I was, think it was before. It was the guy that found us last year, just Chip and I, because I forget yeah. his Twitter last. name because it's long. I know. And I, I was and I looking it up, and it's alphanumeric, it's, and oh, it starts with an M, and there's numbers there's in an it. There's an 001, I think, in the end. But I, I don't know, something like that. I MGN? think his name was like Brent, maybe. I'm really bad with names, but he was nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, MGN 001. Yes. On Twitter. Oh, wait. Also, because... Back to the stand-up stand-up for a second. There's also an ocarina booth very close by. <laughs> and there, mm. there's this guy demoing the, the ocarina all the time. But he 
it didn't seem like he knew how to play it. So while all this bad, all these bad jokes were going on, it sounded like there was some like goofy ass jester off to the side, that you, and you just kept hearing like a boop boop boop. boop oh boop, my god! <laughs> Why didn't everyone go over there, buy an ocarina, and just like heckle the f- people with ocarinas? <laughs> toot, toot. I, I didn't see the ocarina booth. I missed out. Oh man. I would I would have gotten one and heckled. That right been there, so much fun. man. I didn't know. That reminds me of the do, do. the the snake later, but we'll get to the snake. Yes. Yeah. I, I do remember they um Speaking the comedi- of other booths being two, disruptive. Two of the comedians had these things where they're looking for a married couple, and there was just uh Ironicus and his wife and some other people on the other side, and both times the comedians went with the other couple, and it's sort of like uh, it's probably better that way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ironicus looks mean. He looks like he's going to punch you in the face. <laughs> like, I met him and I was like, whoa, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm wiry. That's the thing. Um, but basically, we just bummed around the show floor a lot for a while. And then uh, we went to two things back to back in the uh, in the main hall. The Thrilling Adventure Hour Improv Experience, which also let us camp out seats for the Comedy Mutant Show with uh, Brian Posehn, Kyle Kinane. Uh, Jeremy Essig and Dan Telfer. Oh, but wait. I made a purchase before that. Yes. Yes, you did. Speaking of purchases... <laughs> you- so there's this sweet booth in the corner that had lots of knives, bongs, <laughs> gas masks with bongs as filters, uh, pussy and both both pussy and cocaine energy drink, uh, and also keyblades. <laughs> and I joked, it would be funny if I bought a keyblade. We all agreed. Uh, and then everyone agreed, and then all of a sudden, I was buying a keyboard. <laughs> Peer pressure is a hell of a thing. And the, the moment when he handed over the money and got the keyblade, they started playing the Shaft theme out of nowhere. That, that was perfect. <laughs> yeah. People think we're kidding about that, but it's 100% that, true. It I actually I couldn't happened. believe that it happened. Have you checked the keyblade to make sure that it, doesn't, that it isn't also a bong? <laughs> oh man, what if it is? Oh, I have no shit. Well, I did tear a chunk off it that night accidentally. It's not. <laughs> it doesn't have the greatest craftsmanship. What if the, the crown bit on the top just pops right off? Oh shit. Oh, it does man. have that cap on the end, yeah? Mm-hmm. It's not a key blade, it's key bong. Whoa. It's key Whoa. blaze. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, back to the future. While we were uh, in line for the thrilling adventure, our improv seating, uh, that's when we met Twitter user Sari Yui. Sorata Yui? Sora- Sorry Yui. Sorry Yui. Sorry Sora- Yui. 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 He was dressed as a Shadowrun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That character from Shadowrun, I can never remember the name from, but yeah. He was really sweet. He was a really sweet guy. He was very nice. He also like drove all the way from Killeen, Texas, which is very, very, very far away. That's really far away. Yes. Wow. Well, he was making like a, a week long vacation out of it. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's that's crazy. It's long still a long ass drive. <laughs> <laughs> was it longer than Bob's drive? Yes. It oh, was wow. much, much longer. Wow. Yeah, my drive was like twelve hours. Oof. And his was way longer. I it's asked like him how he did 17 it. 17 or 18, I think. Holy. Something like yeah. that. I can't even So, yeah, imagine. we're kind of a big deal. <laughs> 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 but uh, the uh, Thrilling Adventure Hour show was great. I think it might have been uh, my favorite bit of programming all weekend. Maybe? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Either that or the, uh, the Comedy Mutant show immediately afterward. They were yeah. both pretty great. Mm-hmm. That was pretty good, but the there was the, always that awkward joke with the poison ivy lady leaving right in the middle of that final bit. That was kind yeah. of weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> what was this? Oh, um, have you ever wa- have you watched a lot of Brian Posehn's stuff? Yeah. Okay, you know, so he's a disgusting old man. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a, a lady in a poison ivy costume left halfway through, so he's... To use the bathroom, I presume, because she came back. Because she came right back, and uh, her punishment for walking out in the middle of the show was being added to his spank bank. Uh... So really, it was like a flashback from earlier that day. <laughs> then she yeah. came back in, and he recapped, just to let her know. <laughs> just to let her know that that happened to her while she left. <laughs> yeah. 
And then he said, like, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna masturbate her later, or whatever. <laughs> Everyone's like, it's okay, because you're famous! <laughs> uh, why did people, uh, whatever, that's a whole other podcast. Why are people weird? <laughs> I had another encounter, but it's kind of, uh, that we could probably do that close to the end, because that was on my return trip. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, the other guys, uh, Dan Telfer and Jeremy Essig, were so funny. Yeah, they were great. They were yeah. Funnier than Brian Posehn, even. Yeah. Kyle Kinane, too, if you're going to ask me. Oh, mm-hmm. suck it. Headliner. Oh. <laughs> you think you're so famous, what with your celebrity status? <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd actually never heard of him before. <laughs> I walked past him earlier in the day. I was the only person that saw him. And Stan Lee. <laughs> Without his mustache. No, no I, his... I, I, I saw I saw Stan Lee. Stan Lee in stealth mode. It's I, his civilian <laughs> wear. I physically yeah. brushed past him, and I think he, that's how I got sick. <laughs> <laughs> Just the sleaze melting off him. No, I think it's more so that he sort of, sort of made off with some of my life force or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you and Dan Starenko. Yeah. Anyhow. Both those events were pretty good, though. Um, I had never seen... Oh man, what was their name again? The Adventure Hour people? Yeah, yeah, they yes. they do a scripted uh, uh, podcast show, uh, but they're apparently also improvisers, and they did a yeah. really they did a really funny uh, hour, hour and a half, whatever it was. It was pretty long, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's scheduled for an hour. I'm looking at the schedule now to to refresh my memory. But yeah, random question on that front: How did they um, decide to end the skits? Like sometimes they just boom end in sync, like like there was some timer or something. I think I they just really had like an idea of like, oh, that was a big <clears throat> laugh. We should stop while we're ahead. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes yeah. it was kind of like, oh, you're stopping already. What? <laughs> that or you know they can tell the ideas are starting to slow, and then somebody swoops in to to start the next thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Keep the pace, keep it snappy. But it was a really great show. I don't know if there is video of that. I hope there is. But Hopefully, I think the beginning was a little shaky, but then they like really picked up. Like the adventure 10, hour ten minutes in, we're like doing stuff all over the show all weekend. They uh, they recorded one of their episodes live on Saturday night at a theater hmm. in downtown. They With, had like, Bill Corbett too, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, they did a panel during our panel. The sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and yet there were still people at our panel. <laughs> <laughs> a surprising amount. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but first, there's Saturday. What did we do for dinner Friday night? That wasn't a uh, weather mark. That was somewhere else. Did, oh, um... Did we just hang out in my place Friday night? I yes. think y'all did. I think y'all yeah, did. Yeah, we did leftovers from the night before because I had I had crazy work to do until three in the morning. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. While I had a headache yep. for three hours. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what the 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 beautiful people do on Friday nights. They just hang out in their living room eating leftovers mm-hmm. <laughs> and being sad about work. Is that when we played Cranium too? Yes. Yes. Or that might have been Thursday also. No, wait, that was Thursday because I would have been doing work if that's I right. oh. was ready. That was Thursday we played Cranium. Okay. And me and Chip won. Suck it, married couple. <laughs> You're supposed to be good at all the team-based games. Well. One of us can't hum, and the other can't identify humming. <laughs> I'll leave it to the imagination of the listener. That was re- I thought you guys would be musically inclined because y'all are into, like, Broadway stuff. She's and giving junk. me a look right now. Oh, no! <laughs> I'm also being threatened. <laughs> well, you're lucky her main attack is Snuggles, so... Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can handle it. Um, Saturday, uh, Saturday is when, uh, Kamok arrived to, uh, complete our, our merry band, but before we ran into him, we ran into other people at, uh, the Cozart Effects Studio demo, the, oh, the right. first bit of programming we took in that day. Uh, if you don't know, Face Off is a, uh, reality show that, f- it's a competition format thing that follows a dozen or so uh, make up special effects people, uh, you know, whittled down to one winner of the, over the course of the season. They've done six now? Five. Six. And the winner of the, uh, the fourth season is a guy called Anthony who lives here in Chicago and has his own effects studio and was doing demos and all weekend long, including one on stage. So we saw he's that. Got, he's got like a school with classes and stuff. Yeah. We got a mm-hmm. brochure. It looked pretty cool. <laughs> 
Except it's in the suburbs, so fuck that. Uh, <laughs> but that's where we met. Uh, Pazuzu. That Pazuzu. That Pazuzu. Not the other one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> he is a cool and dude. I like that Pazuzu. He showed off his mm-hmm. adorable dog pictures because he I can't like go dog. five minutes without talking about his adorable dog. <laughs> I don't blame him. Which if is that fine. was my dog, I'd be in the same boat. Mm-hmm. Doing the dog paddle. That is an the adorable s- dog. Sweetest guy with the sweetest dog. It's true. Mm-hmm. He he was dressed as uh, the guy from her. Which oh yeah, is a great costume. Because <laughs> it's plausibly not a costume. Do also. you have a red shirt and a phone? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was a good time. Uh, unfortunately, makeup takes a long time. So, mm-hmm. uh, Anthony barely got to start laying down base coats before he had to get off stage and go back to his booth to finish it up. Yeah, he was, most, he was just mostly... There's a whole lot of talking it, and gluing, really. <laughs> yeah, because the, the dude that was wearing the, the mask, was it was not made for his face, so he had to repair little bits of it because it didn't fit correctly. So, it was just a lot of toilet paper being glued on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping it would be more of a painting-based uh, demo and not yeah. just a gluing-based demo, and chatting about how cool it was to be on a reality TV show. But he was pretty fun. He was pretty, uh, you know. Yeah, he's a real cool guy. Uh, he's a- nice, affable yeah. guy. Mm. So it was, it was nice, and and the guy wearing the makeup was like super into it and was making faces <laughs> and stuff. He was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. So that was neat. I think we did literally zero other uh, events that day. Yeah, what? Saturday's like a kind of a blur right now. I'm I'm looking at the schedule and we did nothing. There, I'm looking at things <laughs> I, I wanted to have done. Oh, we got there late though, didn't we? It was like we one got or there two p.m. Right? Late. That was also the day you forgot your badge, so we had to turn around <laughs> a block away from the place. Ah, uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, they would have let you in. Yeah. And no one was like, checking them. No um, one cared. Like nobody, nobody was checking those badges. Somebody checked Ironicus's badge out before we ever got there. None of our names. We weren't on the list and we're just like, we're doing a panel. And they went, okay, and gave us. I like triple checked with the registry people, you know, like you should have been on that list. Yeah. <laughs> and they just gave us the, the passes that say speaker on them. It's like, man, we could have just <laughs> tricked these people. We could have just bluffed <laughs> our way into this convention. It doesn't really count as tricking if you don't even try. If you just <laughs> because that's what I did on Sunday when the panel was up. I, I just walked up because to set up yeah. my camera equipment. I just walked into the friggin' room. There were no one gave a shit. There were like people sitting down, like uh, union workers, I guess, just like eating breakfast, and they're like, "Hey, what's up?" I'm like, ah, "No, I'm, I'm just gonna go in here and uh, just put all my the, shit." The in trick there. is to act like you belong. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Have confidence. Look like you know what you're doing. Like you're supposed to be there. Hey, save me a donut. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, I walked in with like a ton of gear on my on, on my my person, and they were just like, "Oh, he must he must work here. I forgot his uh, his uh, press pass or something." No, it's a it's a Jimmy Olsen cosplay. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh wait, no. Saturday we went to the fan village, didn't we? Oh yeah, Saturday night oh. we hung out in the fan village. We taught ourselves to play Ticket to Ride, which is a really good game. And it's on Steam, and we should play it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's while such a waiting game. for Camok to arrive. <laughs> and, and while waiting for Camok to arrive, we saw a vision of <laughs> the most fascinating creature to ever grace this earth. <laughs> this shiny, shining beacon of Literally. a cosplayer. It's raw animal sexuality. <laughs> he, was, he was a statuesque man. Very cut, uh, bald, had like some s- fake scarification on his head and like tribal shit on his face and crazy ass contacts. Fangs. And he was, and fangs and makeup. Okay. And he was just decked like head to toe in like basically disco ball just all <laughs> over himself. He was oh my God. reflective and brilliant. Okay, you gotta stop. I'm, I'm like getting the vapors over here. What is this creature? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and. Imagine seeing the guy. That's why I lost the game. I was so distracted. <laughs> <laughs> and your your poor wife went up to take a picture of the guy, and he he like poses and he goes. <laughs> 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 it was really funny about that guy is because 
he just like waltzed into that fan village. <laughs> like, like I'm surprised there were not fog machines like there too. <laughs> but like a stray shaft theme. Yeah, like no, we uh, he came into that room and we had not seen him at all the whole day prior to that. Nope. He was laying was low. Like, it was like he decided to, he wasn't a cosplayer. That was just him, he and was he just waltzed <laughs> into that room. He was summoned there by yeah. something. Uh, I feel like I should say the fan village was a, a room separate from the show floor, uh, where they housed uh, tables for fan groups like, say, the 501st, uh, Chicago Ghostbusters, whatever. Uh, it's also where they had the uh, the board game section, which is why we played Ticket to Ride there. And one uh-huh. cool thing I liked was they had a fan art expo. Uh, oh, that was they, neat. Yeah, they just had cool bits of, of just awesome looking fan art uh, hanging up on the walls like a museum installation with like, you know, credits and, and uh, curator's notes and stuff like that. It was really awesome. Mm-hmm. At Which is where, uh, in the middle of our game, we met a uh, Twitter user at the loser underscore SA and little star Lolo and their third friend who didn't know who we are but was just hanging out with them. <laughs> but he seemed nice too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, he also seemed very nice. <laughs> but he didn't know who you guys were, so fuck him. Yeah, <laughs> but they were they were super sweet too. We didn't even encounter any non sweeties during yeah. this whole no, thing. I was gonna <laughs> say, did you meet one dick? Like just one? Uh, no, I don't think Maybe so. Maybe at the panel, but they. I, I was have, I was too busy talking to the nice people. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm only saying that to cover my bases because like some dicks could have just walked out and not said anything. I, I was surrounded by sweeties. <laughs> How would I know? <laughs> So that was Saturday, and that's when. Oh, talk about your arrival Saturday. <laughs> no, I, I I blocked it out of my mind. <laughs> the pain is still too fresh. That's a traumatic memory of entering Chicago and getting horribly fucking lost. Oh my god. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, McCormick Place is a uh, a puzzle. Poor- <laughs> it's a poorly laid out uh, uh, conflagration of several buildings. It's a non-Euclidean structure. It's an amalgam <laughs> of somethings and stuffs. Do you know M.C. Escher? It's a complex <laughs> complex. <laughs> it's ex- excruciatingly complex. Um, no, I'm just kidding. It wasn't that hard as soon as I you know, figured out what the hell was going on with those um, loop-de-loops. But... Um, no, no. I, uh, also, I kind of blame the twelve-hour drive, making me a little bit frazzled. But uh, no, uh, rightfully so. Yeah, mm. <laughs> listening to This American Life for twelve hours can get you in a weird state of mind. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> everything just seems more poignant, though. Yeah, yeah. Everything all of a sudden has this odd uh, this aura of purposefulness to it. Um, but no, I'm supposed uh, to be lost. <laughs> this is so, all planned uh, for me. I, I, I arrive, um, I, I get up to Chicago, beautiful skyline, I love that, oh man, you can see for miles, and I'm just not used to that over in Virginia, but uh, uh, I go in, I get in, and I, ch- I uh, park my car, and then I get out, I have all my luggage on, I'm about to check in, and as soon as I walk outside, this dude comes up to me, and he's, just, he's like walking his dog, and he's like, hey man, you know where you're going? And I'm like, uh, yeah, it's this hotel right over here, and he was like, oh yeah, it's right over there, you can't miss it. So right off the bat, Chicago, awesome. I loved it. it was super friendly. Super friendly. It was great. Um, but yeah, after that, it all went to shit. Um, <laughs> even the extre- extremely nice um, doorman at our hotel. Showtime. 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 <laughs> Showtime could not help. He. <laughs> I, I was told uh, arriving there by a, 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 a coworker that it. W- I I could easily walk. To this convention center, and I go up to show time. Is coworker a marathon runner? <laughs> Apparently, like, recreationally, a, a marathon runner who absolutely loves pizza, Chicago pizza. <laughs> so I can just imagine her running over to to the convention center with like a deep dish pizza in her hand. Um, but no, I, I um uh, I go to talk to Showtime, and Showtime's like, "Man, whoever told you that is an idiot." And <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Thus began my trek to find a, where the hell this convention center was. And yeah, as, as I stated before, thank you, Ironicus's wife, for being so nice 
so helpful. I say that every day. <laughs> she was such a sweetheart. And um, uh, basically, I was having a goddamn panic attack <laughs> when I was trying to... Because basically, the, the way to get into the convention center is like this awkward series of loop-de-loops. And I went down the first one, which was apparently a path that only buses could take. And <laughs> th- they were all like, hey, man, what the hell are you doing here? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so I call you guys to try and figure out what the hell... Of course, I'm I'm exaggerating, but uh, yeah, we've figured it out, and then uh, we met, and it was great. Mm-hmm. It was awesome Woo! seeing you guys for the first time. That was so cool. We we were watching. We, we were just sitting outside uh, the room our panel was to be in while watching the uh, the cosplay championship via Twitter. Just <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> watching them tweet pictures of the the cool people walking by. <laughs> and and also just watching the crowd that slowly filed out. I guess people who had to, oh, no, my parking, or, oh, early morning. And watching them stream out slowly. That was a good time. Mm-hmm. Oh, I should probably mention that uh, the parking spot that I chose, because I drove and I was able to, you know, uh, get my car all situated. The parking lot for this place was, <laughs> like, a, a goddamn alley, like an alleyway. Like, it didn't, it was like a construction site. That was hiding. Uh, that was trying to hide itself as some sort of like a mugger's alley. Mugger lane. Mugger's lane. I love mugger's lane. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you would not guess that that was a parking lot. <laughs> no, I had no idea where we were going. It looked like we weren't supposed to be down there. Yeah, it looked that's... like an employee-only boiler room style. Area. It looks like a place where, like in an '80s movie, somebody would have a final fight there. <laughs> With, like, steam shooting out of pipes and crap. Actually, yeah. now that you mention it, I'm pretty sure where we parked was where they shot the ending of RoboCop. <laughs> but, uh... No, oh, I know all the filming locations in the city. I was pointing them out. Uh, <laughs> unhelpfully, while your wife was trying to actually give directions. Like, okay, you're gonna want to turn left. This building over here was built in 1948. And it was as, much as, I love, <laughs> as much as I love that, that was, that was pretty funny. Like, I, I love, like... <laughs> being told oh hey bob look at the um pants structures i'm like oh cool where's the fucking turn (laughs) hey hey i don't call them pants i call them pants oh my bad there's there's these there's these sculptures right across the street from a really good breakfast place called yoke that we ate at that shit was phenomenal banana bread french toast Mm! so and there's these structures these sculptures that are like kind of they're not half people like ironic has described them because to be half a person they're you have to have armless people you have to have arms right their, their crotches went legs. up too high to be half people <laughs> their crotches went up far enough that they should be designated as high-waisted pants yeah, i'm pretty pants. sure you referred to them as like some sort of a silent hill two half of a silent hill two monster they kind of look like that. There was like a lot of them all congregated, all creepy like, and they're like <laughs> rusty colored because I don't know what they're made of because I didn't get close to them because I was scared. But <laughs> oh my yeah, maybe, god, maybe it is rust. But like they're all gaggled together like people, and they're just pants, very tall, <laughs> twelve foot tall, fifteen foot. Tall. I don't know how big they're. Big pants is what, what I'm are, getting what are those at. Pants doing? I don't know, so. man. Planning Rustin. something, plotting. They're waiting. Watching us <laughs> always. But I that was my favorite sculpture in Chicago, the pants. I, like I really the, enjoyed the, the pants. The creepy pants. Uh, that's the night. Uh, that drive wasn't just to get out. It was to get to dinner. That's when we all went to... Oh, yeah. I wanted to show off my local neighborhood bar, <laughs> but it didn't have its best foot forward that night. No, because it was know. part... It was part of a C2E2 bar crawl. And I found it pretty entertaining. <laughs> oh, I'm so bummed that I missed that. <laughs> oh, you, would have, you would have been, you were like sick that day, right? I was sick yeah. the whole day, yes. Yeah, Aww. you wouldn't have had fun because your head would have it exploded. It was so yeah. loud. It was so crowded. Well, I mean, in, in another world where I was not. Sailor <laughs> Jupiter was making out with Harley Quinn. Oh, mm-hmm. man. It was, yeah. I mean, that's something. Drunk Wolverine came and pointed at something on the menu with his claws, so really he pointed at three different things <laughs> as a suggestion. You're want this, Bob. I mean, Bub. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, mm. <laughs> yeah, he came up right behind me, and then all of a sudden I have a, a fucking Wolverine cosplayer over my shoulder, like, telling me what to order. I'm pretty sure I, I wanted him back, though. When he left, I was like, come back! I want to talk to you! Oh my god, dude! <laughs> 
I didn't see what he fucking pointed at. I thought he pointed at the the pigs in a blanket, so I just got that. But I wanted to make sure that it was what Wolverine <laughs> wanted me to get. <laughs> I walked past him on the way to and from the bathroom. There, w- there was no dance floor in this bar. It's just a regular pub, they basically. Sure they, they tried. They sure really tried. Hard. They tried to make a dance floor, so when I had to squeeze past all these power girls and Wolverines. And when you're drunk, every Stay floor Puff is Marshmallow a dance floor. Man. And Wolverine was in there and grinding on some Sailor Jupiter. It might have been the same girl. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But grinding on a Sailor Scout or something. And he had a... He had the claws on, he had a beer in one hand, and he's just, like, grinding with the, the beer and the pokey claws everywhere. And I almost, I almost got my eye gouged out, because he's too invested on grinding and holding his beer. Uh, but how about that elf guy, though? <laughs> oh, was that the guy with the flap? The crotch Dude. flap? <laughs> we can't even call it a loin It claw. was a napkin. It was a tiny <laughs> napkin. It was, like... It was a loin hanky. I tried to get a picture of him, but my shutter speed was too slow, so he he was gone. <laughs> It was, it was like a three by five card hanging from a leather strap yeah. around his yeah. waist. Your, your, your camera might not have had enough magnification on that to see. <laughs> it was. It was. I had great framing too because there that was. Shit. I was looking outside the window because he was outside the bar now, and but there's some stuff like on the wall. So it was cold the way, out. <laughs> the way it was framed, it was just like only from the waist down for a whole bunch of people, and the single man in the front with just this little flap in front of his his junk. There was nothing holding it in place. It was just hanging from a little belt. And like, it was windy outside, too. It mm-hmm. was really cold it was that night. Cold. Yeah, it was pretty cold. It was like, how did that flap stay and down? And that flap was dainty. <laughs> that is how you describe that costume. You just get some super glue and... <laughs> just oh, stick Put it, it on to your the, junk. the head of your penis. So it stays. <laughs> just the tip. <laughs> it anchors to it. <laughs> how in the world can you grind in that situation? You're just getting dicks rubbed on you at that point. I don't all of a sudden, know. this is Outlast. I don't know what that was called. Call the flash card for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the guy, like right after that, was cosplaying my dad. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! There's, there's a weird dad outside, just standing on the sidewalk, <laughs> looking into the bar and not doing anything. He was just sitting, standing there outside. I think in the he cold. was like on his phone too. Yeah, he was. Was, was he like was a he? local dude who was just sort of like, "What are all these kids doing here?" I don't know. He wasn't wearing a loincloth, so I don't know what Didn't his deal memo. was. He might have been cosplaying as uh, George R. R. Martin. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps Ed Greenwood. It's hard to tell. Uh. The people in that bar were mega obnoxious. Oh my god! When I went to the when I went to the bathroom, there was like a bathroom drama unfolding at, at the girls' room. I came up. <laughs> And there was a girl waiting on the line. I was like, oh, I guess this is the line. She's like, yeah, mm-hmm, crazy night. Yeah, mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that one's that one's not open. No, I think there's a girl in there being sick. I was like, oh, that sucks. And then some some another obnoxious cosplayer comes by. Like, oh, my God, is Teresa in there? I don't know her fucking name. I'm making up a name. Is she in there? I'm like, yeah, okay. She's in there. Like, Are you okay? Banging on the door. Are you all right in there? Honey. Honey, what's going on? Is there somebody in there with her? Are you going to the bathroom? (laughs) And this other girl came by dressed as some superhero. And she's like, I got to piss out my way. And she was just just being obnoxious. Commanding. And and she was like, oh, this is the line. Shit. I'll just piss in this bucket over here. And she like pretended to pee in a bucket. It's like, who are you? I'm not even drunk yet. I feel like I skipped some steps. And she was like... Oh, what's going on at this bathroom? Oh, is there someone in there? Is she sick? What's going on in there? <laughs> it was like a big, like, to-do about figuring out what's going on in that bathroom. And, like, the only sober girl in line was like, yeah, someone's sick in there, and she has a friend in there with her also. And then the drama subsided. Oh, she has someone in there with her? Okay. All right, good. <laughs> this is, like, the third... A bar we've been to, so and she's like, like this. When this girl came out, she was like a hundred pounds, like five four, dressed as Catwoman, and it's like this is the third <laughs> bar you've been to. You're gonna be throwing up a lot tonight, little girl. Oh no! <laughs> so dramatic, and I, I was just watching, watching I imagine- unfold. Wasn't the the uh, all the dudes in the the bathroom? Were they just leaving the door open? Yep. <laughs> I yeah. got a hearty thank you from all the girls just staring in while they waited for the ladies' room. <laughs> they could have just for not being the, <laughs> For being the only guy to close the goddamn door. 
I'm compelled to watch. <laughs> I'm the true superhero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, the, the crawl moved on to their fourth bar, and then oh, we God. actually got to hang out and talk yeah. and hear ourselves think. And it that got was a good so night. much more quiet in there, and the, <laughs> I love there were that a few the, stragglers, the bar though. was like... The wait staff actually had time to pay attention to us yeah. and not fight through a million people. I love that the, um, the party playlist abruptly stopped. <laughs> and, it, and it was a looping playlist, and it looped yeah. at least once. It was I think like, twice, maybe twice. Yeah, yeah. While, while we were there, it was just like eight songs, like not that many party songs. Yeah. <laughs> this bar is not it used is to cool, parties. Though, that, like it, it was being emceed by like the actual owner, and he's a real cool guy. Hmm. So I mean, even though it's not their usual thing, it's it's cool that they support you know events and community stuff. That's I like that place. Uh huh. I just like it. I like it. Uh, I burned the shit out of my mouth on those uh, pigs and blankets, but I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I had an excellent hamburger there. Remind me not to take good. Uh, eating it, ordering advice from Wolverine. <laughs> that was not not a good. Well, idea. he can he can eat it as hot as he wants it because he'll just regenerate his, the roof of his yeah, mouth. Back. That's true. I, mm -hmm. I imagine Wolverine with uh, pigs and blankets on each claw, and he's just like eating them <laughs> off. <laughs> Maybe he just wants to eat really unhealthy food because he has three months to die. <gasps> Wait, can Wolverine never be fat? <laughs> <laughs> he might now. He's been killable for a while. God, hmm. keep up with comics. Oh, I'm sorry. They announced that last E2E2, didn't they? They they announced that it was coming, and then they published it, and the new the the final arc of this like uh year plus long project is called Three Months to Live or Three Months to Die, mm. and it's starting soon. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Right, I know Wolverine. Wolverine shit. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not laughing at you. I'm just laughing in general because it's like they're trying so many things. Why don't just instead of like zombies or like three months to die? Why don't you just make all of them fat? Just <laughs> <laughs> every single superhero, just make them fat. Wolverine right now is being written by one of my favorite um, multi uh, uh, multi format, I guess, writers. I really like his TV work and his recent novel. Hmm. And his uh, the sequel to that novel drops at the end of the month. So yeah. Bob, have you seen the GIF that I think Borden made of Fat Spider-Man grinding on Fat Flash? <laughs> <laughs> no. Where is this? Oh, oh, that is old, but so good. That is a very old GIF. Oh, I guess I gotta so find great. it. I mean, I, the I most, need to see this too. The most Wolverine exposure I've gotten is someone linking on Twitter recently: Wolverine eating a banana, <laughs> just sitting at a table, <laughs> just eating a banana. <laughs> Oh, and by the um, way, just uh, before uh, I forget, I am super sorry that we lost my car the first night. Oh, it was an endeavor oh, to, no. to find that car. <laughs> I, I like I met you guys, and then like my brain just reformatted right there, and I could not figure out where the hell I parked. So we like <laughs> walked around in circles <laughs> for like a fucking hour, and I felt like we, an asshole. <laughs> we practically, if if it was you know in a straight line, we would have done laps around the building, <laughs> yeah. or I suppose in a circle. If it, we had we just been doing kept going in one way, we would have gotten there. But instead, we kept like I kept like. Even even by circumnavigating the globe, we would have eventually <laughs> gotten there quicker. Uh, anyway. Speaking about globes, I just linked that <laughs> aforementioned gif of fat superheroes grinding on each yep, other. That, that certainly is a bump and or grind. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, their, oh, their belly. Oh. Oh. Oh, this reminds me of that Sonic mod. Oh, no. <laughs> So that covers um, Friday, uh, Saturday. Sunday started with a breakfast between most of us, and this is where we added our moderator, Clint of Alka Hollywood, to our merry band. Mm -hmm. I tried to uh, get together with him, you know, introduce him to everybody Saturday, but uh, between schedules and uh, cell reception, it didn't work out. But Sunday, y'all got to meet him. Mm -hmm. Yep, I confused him with uh, a Jep. <laughs> I, uh, right at first, I thought I was like, because I kept hearing that Jep was um very sick and, I, and he came into the room and i was like oh i'm so sorry that you were sick i heard you're very handsome you are very handsome and then he was like i'm not i'm not him i'm not that guy and i'm like oh I like, no i like how i started this in joke of you're very handsome <laughs> well it's, it's like, true it's like ironicus, ironicus asked like like when we were waiting around uh for job to get in we we're waiting at the the shitty comedy thingy I already forgot. Stand up, stand up. 
uh, he was like, what does he, what does he look like? You saw his, his Facebook picture or whatever. What does he look like? It's like, oh, well, he's, he's tall and. I'm just I mean, a dude. He's, he's, ha- he's handsome. Like, just, I'm just classically a handsome dude. Very sharp features. Very masculine jaw. He's handsome. And then when he when he came up, ironically, he was like, "Oh my God, you are handsome." <laughs> <laughs> kind of an awkward greeting, like, "Uh, hi." <laughs> oh, hi. I, I think my words may have been, uh, "Oh, I do believe I've got the vapors." <laughs> the hunkiest man I've ever seen M- might have been the exact quote, but but yeah, it was something like that. <laughs> uh. This is why we need a hunks of LP calendar. We have some untapped potential here. You've got some hunks and then you've got some hanks. <laughs> <laughs> I live in the hank bank. Me too. What's up, hank, buddy? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, But then we had a panel and it was the best thing. It was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. People really dug it and I just... I don't know. I don't know how much of the, the before stuff is like... Uh, uh, Kamok, you just went early to, to hook up all the tech, so you unfortunately missed breakfast, and I'm so sorry about that. No, it's all right. I, I really I, feel bad about that. No, it's cool. I, uh, you know, when doing filming and stuff, you gotta, you gotta prepare for everything, and I was not gonna have anything mess up yeah. on me. And... You were extraordinarily on the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. Like, anything could have happened, you would have been like, Everybody I got Everybody else <laughs> left breakfast and went ahead, and then I came up the rear because I had to stop off... Uh, at my apartment to drop off people's uh, doggy bags and pick up the, uh, the 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 notes, the sheets that I had forgotten to grab on the way out. So I got there last. And I was just like in this tizzy of like, all right, mic me up, show me my seat. And then there's still, uh, all right, got got to chat with everybody, uh, talk to Clint about timing. Uh, and then there's still ten minutes left, and I have no idea what to do with myself. <laughs> By the way, just a few notes on like setting up and everything while you guys were uh, eating and stuff. And I uh, basically it was uh, me and uh, this other guy who was the coolest dude at this freaking place. He was so helpful. And uh, his name was Miguel. And he, I seriously shouts out the that guy. He was really great. Was he, that the same guy who helped me hook up? Get the, get the hookups for my laptop, the projector. Yep, that's him. The dude with the, the older guy with the mustache. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He was nice. He was so nice, and I was, uh, you know, because I had some uh, some issues uh, coming up there because I, I noticed, you know, there were uh, five people on the panel, including Clint, and there were only like four mics for everyone, and I was like, hey man. Uh, could we get an extra mic? And seriously, as soon as he, as I asked that, he gets on his walkie and he calls like fucking 10 people come into the room and they're like, how can we help you? We heard that you needed help. And I was like, oh, yeah, we just need a mic. Okay, let's get on it. And like, <laughs> oh, wow. But then uh, the, the head of the whole place came up and notified me that if we added an extra mic, that would be an extra thousand dollars. So oof. that Whoa. is absolutely absurd. Yeah. Oh, OK, so four mics, right, is free. Yep. <laughs> Five mics is a thousand dollars. Yep. She looked at me. How, how I told you we should have printed off out? that coupon. <laughs> I asked her and she was just like. She just, um, I was like, what the fuck is going on with this price? And she looks at me and goes, union. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. not only the, that, the but mics she, are union mics? Apparently. Like, apparently it was uh, this big ordeal. There, there was some, something else she said, too, that, like, uh, the way that they had the board set up, this is kind of technical, feel free to cut this out, but the way that they had the board set up, it, was, it only had four inputs for the mics, and if we added another one, we, they would have to get a wireless setup. Uh, and in order to plug in more mics, and they were just not into doing work, I guess they they didn't want to they didn't want to do that. So they're like, give me a thousand dollars and I'll do it. So, anyways, good thing we had those mics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had about uh, 45, 50 people show up. Something like that. Surprisingly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was so like, early too. It was ten forty five in the morning it was on a Sunday. It was the first fucking thing. The night after mm-hmm. all the bar crawls and stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh and there's we we uh before we started there was a quick show of hands. Like most of the group was like down with uh LP and were weren't just there randomly. And most of that group uh watch stuff from at least one of us i i mean we didn't go into more detail than that mm-hmm. uh 
didn't, didn't want to start some sort of gang fight. <laughs> and it should be noted that uh, during the whole intro, while I was setting up and getting everything ready, I was overhearing uh, Miguel talking to a newer lady there, and he was basically telling her like, "Oh, it's Sunday. They're not going to be that many people here. They're you know they're basically winding down. If you're not going to come one day to C2E2, it's going to be Sunday." And then all of a sudden, like we have people showing up like 20 minutes, 15 minutes before the thing starts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, okay." And when there's like 10 people who came in like almost right away and I was like okay here are the people we're going to be talking to the whole time yeah. <laughs> and then it was like oh more people are coming in and it was like the the room we were in how many people did it hold 300 is a 300 seat room, when we yeah. when we first saw that room and figured out it was 300 <laughs> people that was really intimidating yeah i'm pretty and sure like, you, s- you sent out a tweet that was just like there is no way we're going to fill this up <laughs> and there was we went like on the first day at C2E2, we went to a panel that was in the room next to our panel room that was basically the same size, and it was like, whatever it was, I can't remember what that panel was, but there were like 12 people uh, in there. It was the, the Boom Studios, publisher of uh, many things, including uh, Adventure Time, uh, the comic. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It w- We left halfway through because it was kind of... They weren't saying anything interesting, and we wanted to see more of the terrible stand-ups because yeah. they kind of overlap. <laughs> it was kind of like a big advertisement that yeah, panel. a little yeah. That's kind what a lot of the publishers are like, but sometimes they're really interesting. Mm. And I mean, they they put out good books, but they didn't put on a very good show, if you ask me. Mm. But yeah, seeing that panel, I was thinking like, <laughs> well, it's going to be like this many people or less. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we like quadrupled, we, like, tripled, quadrupled that. We yeah. like quadrupled how many people came up to see Boom. Pretty so crazy. I was, I was pretty happy with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, do we want to... Yeah, let's talk about the panel, and you want to cover any issues we left, or leave that for the end? Uh, hmm. I think we can save that for the end, probably. Okay. The, but uh, the panel itself was a great time. Um, it made me feel even worse for not uh, getting Clint to meet people at least a day in advance, because <laughs> he was really nervous... But he seemed uh, like a chill dude, though. I mean, I've got yeah. I he's got, a really nice guy. That's that's why I asked him to do it. I knew he'd do a good job, even though he felt a little out of his el- element. But yeah. as soon as you like get him talking about things, I mean, he asked good questions. He kept us mm. uh, on schedule, mm-hmm. even though we didn't leave enough time in our schedule in the end. <laughs> Then the whole thing where we couldn't... What the hell is with Google Docs and you can't, like, full screen a friggin... <sighs> yeah, yeah, you can't full screen a Google Docs presentation unless you are connected to the internet. And we had no internet in there Man, because it's just no crazy. Sense. That makes no damn sense at all. <sighs> it doesn't make any sense. But um, I wish I was there while, while we were doing the prep, or at least I wish I was, like, over in that area so I could have uh, routed my phone because I was uh, getting an LTE signal. Mm. Oh, damn it. Yeah, oh, man. My bad. Oh, well. My bad I wasn't in charge of every single thing. <laughs> <laughs> Failed us, Bob. <laughs> I think we talked some good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you at home can be the judge of that. The video Whoa. is up now or soon, depending. <laughs> uh, 12 hour, 12 and a half hours from this podcast. The recording oh, of this podcast. So, yeah. It, it's probably It should out. be uh, shared before the podcast is. So He did a great job, though, Clint. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He was very good. If you want to hear more of Clint, check out Alka Hollywood. It's very good. Coming up in a few weeks is uh, I'm going back for the Silent Hill episode. This uh, all of May is video game month. I'm Alka jealous. That you're <laughs> Me gonna too. Watch the Silent Hill movie. <laughs> Are you gonna watch it for the first time? Yes, this is my oh, first. Oh time. my oh, god! <laughs> oh, oh wow! Pro- probably at least one of their first time too. It doesn't seem like something that either of them oh, would no. watch recreationally, no- knowing the two of it's them. It's an experience. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you you have to watch the second one though. Like, yeah, you need to. If you're gonna watch the first one, you absolutely—it's a requirement. All right, mm-hmm. all right, all right. Mm-hmm. I've heard the okay. second mm-hmm. one's even better. Yeah, it better, is be- better in the good it's bad way. So much, yeah. so much better. Better with an asterisk. <laughs> Everyone seemed really excited about uh, our next LP that we announced there. Yes. Uh, Wonderful one hundred and one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and uh, recorded a video of the first boss fight of mm -hmm. Wonderful 101. I'm pretty happy with how that turned People out. People loved that. I don't think mm -hmm. they were paying attention to a damn thing we said, but they were enraptured by the game. Mm -hmm. Everybody <laughs> loves Lambo, man. Everybody loves that guy. I didn't see anybody like checking their phones or like doing other yeah. things or, or talking to somebody else like, should we go now? Like, this is kind of boring, you know? Nobody mm -hmm. left during yeah. it. Like, they were Hell, enraptured. Some of, the people were, some of the people were actually act participating. Like, with, a few yeah. people in the front were actually <laughs> commenting yeah. along with you guys. I mean, that's... I was hoping for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you asked for that at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Oh, whatever. I encouraged it, except in the case of uh, hateful, bigoted, or otherwise stupid oh, yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that was funny. On that guideline. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was half expecting someone to just start screaming out rape and then all of a sudden turn into a Swede. <laughs> there, he was here, he knew! Oh, yeah, you, that segues into something you wanted to talk about. Um, you mentioned being in the crowd with the camera, noticing that they were uh, drifting for a while. There were some things they weren't quite following us on. Did you want to talk about that? Um... Well, I mean, uh, being in the in the crowd, I kind of was able to gauge a few people while blocking several people from behind me from seeing anything that was going on in the channel. Which, <laughs> Why whoever, they move? whoever you, whoever those three people were, I'm sorry that you decided to sit there right in front of where I was. Fucking set up open seats. <laughs> I don't know why you sat right there, and I don't know. Bob was Every there time first, I turned jerks. around, <laughs> I kept turning around too, and I had all of my stuff, all of the mics, like the receivers taped to the chair. And every time I did that, there were like these two or three people who just kept looking at me, like, <laughs> "What? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Where are you going?" I'm just like, move, "Move! Move! Fucking behind me!" Whatever. Anyway, whoever you people are, fuck you. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, every time we uh, uh, Pootie Pie was mentioned, well, he was never actually mentioned by name. You might want to censor that, by the way, in the, in the first comment. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, anytime that hypothetical Swede was mentioned, hypothetically... <laughs> he, he who uh, must not be named. He, he who yes, must Lord not Voldemort. be named. He who must not be <laughs> bro-fisted. Pootamort. Pootamort. Um, <laughs> Uh, like uh, I, I noticed that there was some like trepidation within the the audience. Like I, I got the feeling that um, when it got negative like that, mm -hmm. people weren't really as receptive to that. And I was kind of worried about that because yeah. I didn't know if the, it was just like they didn't get it, or you know, they, we were making fun of someone who they didn't really understand, or maybe they were actually like fans, and we were kind of being like mean to them. Like I really didn't know how to. Yeah, that was actually when. Um, I thought about what I wanted to say during the uh, before the panel happened. I decided that I wouldn't mention PewDiePie at all, and then I did it anyways. <laughs> because well, it's it, kind of hard not to. Yeah, I mean, he's literally the the biggest thing, the I biggest mean, example. You just yeah, he, he is the eight hundred pound blonde, dashingly attractive gorilla, <laughs> <laughs> one of a kind. Let me tell you. <laughs> Excruciatingly annoying. He's, he's no, he's no reticulated python, though. I'll give you that. No, he's uh, yeah. not. <laughs> he <isn't. laughs> we are the reticulated pythons of LP. <laughs> when when you were saying this uh, Sunday over Sunday evening over dinner, uh, and so when when I got home, I brought it up with my wife Sunday later that evening, uh, who was also in the crowd and didn't get as much of that sense. Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Also, she was very proud of me for, for not being as negative as I should be. Uh, I was told ahead of time to not say that I hate all rich people because I was being filmed. Um, Your wife is very wise. <laughs> but but yeah, no, she, maybe she, she said she was surprised that we all, I mean, knowing how we talk about these issues, that, that we kept it as um, non judgmental as we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my original decision i kind of strayed from it a little bit but i didn't want to alienate people yeah. who came because i didn't know who was going to come yeah because especially since it was like kids day you know you, you have oh, no yeah. idea who's in the audience yeah. and we i know that we talked kids, about actually yeah, yeah which was funny because didn't you guys talk about oh, we, not like cursing or kids. anything we had like teen kids yeah they were, one kid was like 10 okay <laughs> that's like a teen there was a 10 year old apparently that, that's that's like teen with one ear removed <laughs> is that kid with his mom or something? I didn't yes, see that. Yes, there's a pair of kids with a mom, probably theirs. Oh they might no, be brothers. I said the F word once. I didn't yeah, 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 I noticed that. 
Uh, Geop was so cool about brothers. it, though. Okay. He, like, messed up, and then he apologized immediately. But everyone else was, like, just dropping F-bombs, being like, eh, whatever the fuck, I don't give a shit. I tried really hard, and I said one by accident during the LP part. <laughs> I, don't I, even, just, I don't even know when I say things. Because I was excited about video games, you guys. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember most of what I said, so I don't remember dropping an F-bomb. I might have. <laughs> I don't know. I think you said shit or something. Yeah, no, I think you, you were, said, uh, I think it was bastard. I'm sorry that you were, were just so like, nope. out of it. I mean, not just for the weekend and the panel and all, all o- of that. Honestly, everything. I cannot remember I'm most s- of what happened in the panel outside of a few <laughs> no. little Dude, things. I'm serious. I, I, It looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm watching the video. <laughs> And it, you look just so out of it, and I'm so sad. Like I was, I was desperately trying to make sure you were feeling good that entire day because you were, you looked like you were in a fucking fugue state, dude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you were. Oh man, I, saw I remember the when on we were, Twitter, kind of like, yep, <laughs> there it is. I was kind of like, yep, yeah. keep playing. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's like 28 days later, except he's just there. Just everyone's alive. He's the only zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Those zombies oh, were very man. alert, though. <laughs> <laughs> and very, very handsome. Mm-hmm. Strikingly. Uh, but after the panel was the best part, because it's when everyone, like, rushed the stage, and we did, like, a, a stage dive. Yeah, and man. And I signed <laughs> boobies. And, uh... Now, it wasn't quite like that, but it was really... There, there was a real uh, outpouring mm-hmm. of, like, love and support. And too many people to mention their Twitter handles. Yes. And I gave people pins... So yeah. I had a bunch. I think Somebody I only gave left. us chocolate coins. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I ate one of them right away, and then for some reason, I I had pockets that were really bad at holding change, my back pockets. So, so when I got up out of my chair, I, some coins fell out, and so I picked those <laughs> coins and put them back in my back pocket, and also absentmindedly put one of the chocolate coins in there. And then far later <laughs> in the day, I was trying to get change out of that back pocket. <laughs> Specifically, when we were at the 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 round table place where we were waiting to get food. Um, when they were talking about the fucking snake, and I went back into my back pocket to get change, and then I just pulled out a hand covered in chocolate. <laughs> and I was really embarrassed, and I didn't want anybody to notice, so I was, like, very, like, sneakily, like, licking my face. <laughs> Which would look hilarious to anyone else. It's like, oh, man, that guy shit himself. Oh, now he's eating it. It was, like, it was all melted, too. So it's like, this could look like shit in my hand or something. And I just pulled my hand out of my pants. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I better eat this chocolate. <laughs> I remember the, at the ultimate uh, goon story. At the hotel later, Chip was sitting somewhere, and he stood up, and there were, like, three or four pennies there. And I was like, hey, Chip, you, you lose some coins? Like, oh, yeah, it's been happening all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, I got invited to a... Uh, I'm, I'm the local, so I got extra attention. Uh, oh. I, I got invited to a, a monthly or bi-weekly or whatever game night. So that's cool. Cool. Uh, if you're listening to this, I haven't heard any more details from you, so <laughs> I would still like to go whenever that is. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to whoever... Um, a lot of you were coming up to me. I think I had three or four people come up to me and just like start talking to me, but I was so trying to like take all the video equipment down because I had like more than... Oh, I think it was God, like $3,000 yeah. worth of equipment there. It was, it was you and Geop just like had half an hour of work just like wrapping cords and packing things away and like I was pretty much just sitting there he was doing most of it (laughs) because I was like where does this go (laughs) you put two in a ziploc bag or one in a ziploc bag I don't understand (laughs) (laughs) oh man we're we're all in the hallway uh, just still hanging out with the crowd which is great like we spent so much time still on on the dais that uh, I think Geek Bar Chicago who had the the room next were getting pretty frustrated with us I'm like yeah everybody out to the hallway (laughs) Mm mm-hmm (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh man. um what was her twitter handle little star lolo she gave me a drawing that was really good oh yeah that i saw an that drawing that That's was a really, really good great drawing you are talented and she gave me uh-oh did somebody drop mm-hmm. uh-oh no. ironicus dropped oh uh-oh uh-oh. Oh no! Uh-oh. Keep on talking. Yes, that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tell me more, ironicus. So, how about them drawings of people with keyblades? Uh, it was great. Uh, I looked very handsome in that picture. Uh, <laughs> she that probably drawing. did that in like one night, I guess. That was yeah. yeah I mean, that we was met her really the, impressive. We met her. Yeah. I wonder if she did it from memory or used the uh, tweeted picture uh, from Saturday morning as like probably a reference. Probably, probably, yeah. yeah. 
a picture of me sleeping with a keyblade. Mm-hmm. You're very Bishonen in that. So, yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> uh, she gave me her... Uh, she she's, does commissions and stuff, too, and she gave me her business card, so I'm actually probably going to commission something from her for the next Let's Play. Oh. Cool. Ooh. Whoa. And if you want a piece of that, Little Star Lolo on Twitter, and I believe also Tumblr. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Maybe cool. DeviantArt, I'm not sure. Uh, Plugs. I don't think so. I, ch- I checked her Tumblr out, and I don't think there were any DeviantArt links or anything like that. There's also someone I met after the panel who did apparently did a Let's Play of the Stanley Parable, which I don't know how that's possible, but I don't remember his name, so I can't look it up. I thought someone told you that Maxwell Adams did one, or was there... <laughs> they, yeah. they did, but it yeah. wasn't really a Let's Play. They, I remember seeing that. They streamed it, like, years ago, and it was the original that was just to have, like, two minds instead of the more polished thing they released oh, okay. earlier last year. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, that, oh. that is a horse of a different color. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I just remembered. There was one dude who came up to me after the panel and said... Uh, that he started to get into video editing stuff at college because of watching my Let's Plays. Oh, wow. So Usually actually, people get into just doing Let's Plays. Be- yeah. <laughs> he was like, he's, he's like talking about video editing. He liked how I edited my videos and some of the other stuff he's seen me do. And he's like, yeah, so I just started taking courses in video editing, motion graphics and stuff. And I was like, that's great. See, that's, that's a really that's nice cool. thing. To have someone say mm. to you, because that's just not like, oh, hey, thanks for providing entertainment. No, that's like, I've heard people talk about Mystery Science Theater like that, too, because, yeah. you know, some of the criticisms are actually like legit like uh, video editing techniques. And, you know, don't, you know, put your boom in the way of the shot, though. That's probably a bad one. That's kind <laughs> of obvious. <laughs> but like, no, people are actually watching your stuff and they're like like taking it and making it and being like practical about it and act- yeah like, he could oh, get yeah. a job in that stuff so yeah that's a that's a pretty big uh pretty big compliment one mm-hmm. day i hope to be told i inspired someone to talk like a jackass when they were in college <laughs> <laughs> you made me into a jackass <laughs> you did this you to jerk. me <laughs> I can't wait to have someone tell me that they were inspired to dress up like Wolverine and go and recommend people eat stuff at the bar crawls. Yeah, one point is uh, both appetizer, entree, and dessert. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. For, from there, we did more uh, floor exploration stuff and split up for a while. Or, no. No, that was before that, we that went. That followed while we just hung out at the round tables and met the, the most hyped guest of uh, C2E2. Easily the most Easily. hyped guest of C2E2. Oh, no, it wasn't the guy from Ghostbusters, but it was someone else at the Ghostbusters booth. What was the guy from Ghostbusters called? Because uh, he didn't get was, mentioned as nearly as much as his co-star. Uh, Ernie Hudson, Ernie Hudson. was, was yeah. there uh, as part of uh, a t- a c- the 20th anniversary of The Crow. So Ernie Hudson of Ghostbusters fame and a couple other guys who are also in The Crow. Mm-hmm. Um, now, was he the reticulated python? Uh, well, no, that was from a booth across the way, but they borrowed the python for photo ops. Mm-hmm. Ah. Her yeah. name was Lemon Drop, which is <laughs> the cutest name possible for a snake. <laughs> and she was a, what, how, it was 14 was or 16, 16 foot long. 16 foot long, 16 year old, 135 pound albino Burmese reticulated, reticulated python. python. Hey, I hear wow. you only have to feed those things four times four a year. Four times, right? times a year. Four times a year. <laughs> wow. All 135 pounds of her. So in order to get people to come to this booth, not only did they borrow a python from, like, the the Friends of the Reptiles booth, but they had this carnival barker just going on and on <laughs> all day long. And he clearly only had a little sheet with four bullet points on Fun it. Fun fact, you gotta play this stuff hard. <laughs> The entire time with the backing track of Ghostbusters. No, that's the thing. Yeah. They stopped playing Ghostbusters once they took away Lemon Drop. And oh. Ernie Hudson was still up there. <laughs> because Ernie Hudson doesn't want to hear that shit. Ernie He's Hudson's been hearing it for 30 like, years now. Uh, it's Lemon Drop's favorite song, though. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Who are you going to Maybe Lemon concert? Drop had a cameo in Ghostbusters and we don't know about it. So, oh, man. Like, we were, it was after we split up and we were trying to regather and we were all going to eat. So we're just like staying put. And subjecting ourselves to this like <laughs> water torture of the lemon drop spiel. How, <laughs> that dude went on long? for at least yeah. forty five minutes. How long yeah. do you think? It felt like it felt like really close to an hour. Mm-hmm. And was. that's when I got a wonderful little video of Chip and his oh, yes. blade. Yes, yes, yes. 
That was before. Go ahead and watch that if you're bored. That was before I'll, we I'll freed the slaves. I'll put that in this podcast. <laughs> Along with the gif of, of Fat Spider-Man grinding on yeah. Fat Flash. <laughs> yeah, I already said and, that. And a picture of the pants sculpture. And the drawing, yes. Also, Make if you... Checklist. If you watch that uh, that short Keyblade video, uh, you'll faintly hear in the background uh, me throwing a piece of candy at uh, our next fan encounter. <laughs> it's Moida on Twitter, something with Moida. I think yeah, it's Moida. Moida. Yeah, it, it's like it's Moida. It's yeah. Moida Rising time. <laughs> when I when I saw his um, his Twitter handle, I thought he was spoiling Danganronpa because <gasps> there's a character there's a character named Mioda. <laughs> <laughs> and it's spelled almost the same as Moida, and him, him, his Twitter name being it's Moida, it's Mioda. I was like, oh, is she the mastermind? You son of a bitch! <laughs> we did see a couple dang rompas there. So many yeah. Roombas, my God! First cosplayer I saw was somebody from Dang and Rampa. First person. D- did you give them a sticker that says "banned" or Do something? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you did you probate them? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> kind of kind of groaned, and then the next person to walk off the bus was that stormtrooper I told you about, the guy who had the headset with the speaker, and then oh, and then yeah. I forgot about oh, it. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> that was really cool. There was a dude who was dressed up like a stormtrooper, and he had a headset. So whenever he was we- wearing the helmet and he was talking, it would come out like a speaker, like in the movies. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of cosplayers, we saw a lot of dicks this year. Oh. Mm-hmm. Lots of ding-dongs. Oh. Lots of dick pulls. Whole, whole lot of uh, man cleavage. Uh, it was yeah. a very gender-neutral <laughs> uh, convention. I think very equal cleavage in regards to boobs, asses, and ding-dongs. <laughs> Dude, there was <laughs> That a, is I the got, medical term. I got yes. film of this Deadpool who oh, was man. just all but (laughs) (laughs) you'll be able to see him because i I put um oh by the way i totally put um i got a shot of uh of uh fat solid snake yes and he was very interested in my camera and he had a a refrigerator box so he can get all the ghosts and so he he sees me in the camera oh my god refrigerator there was a fat snake snake. Solid, solid snack (laughs) <laughs> there was Solid Snack and Boba Fett, and I got both of them. <laughs> I, I really like the prom dress Boba Fett. We saw her oh, a couple yeah. of days. Like, if, if you make a Boba Fett prom dress, you don't wear it just one day. You know, <laughs> you wear you it all night. Get some mileage out of that shit. Yeah. I don't know who he was dressed as. There was a guy dressed as some sort of spandexy superhero, and he had really spiky hair. And he, uh, he looked like somebody who should have been taller. Like his head was an adult head on a kid body. So it was weird. <laughs> oh, dear. But he was That's low. That's unfortunate. He was low balling. <laughs> like his spandex situation <laughs> illustrated was he thusly. He was just low balling. There was one to the left and one to the right. I mean, yeah. and that, that's an issue. <laughs> that's right. Oh, no. It was, oh, it no. was, a, it was a, f- a mighty few inches longer than in a normal sack would, would be <laughs> reaching down a normal person's thigh. Man's all and, balls. And I Ugh. shouldn't have known that. Maybe but because he was, of maybe the he was using padding. Knew, he was stuffing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was stuffing some oranges, some lemons. It was, oh, that's it why just, they call like, we should call him Lemon Drop. <laughs> His name should be Lemon Drop. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 16 feet my ass. Reticulated? No. no. <laughs> Albino, though. Got that right. <laughs> I saw a lot of pythons at C2E2. <laughs> so, probably the worst the worst one I saw was uh, a really... All of them? A, the, the the costume otherwise was really good, but it's it was a gross character already. Yeah, and it, it was Doctor Roxo. Oh yes, from Metalocalypse. Mm. I saw I saw that the outline of that the entire outline of that man's penis. Also, <laughs> what was even worse, because that dude had the body of Doctor Roxo. He was perfect. He was perfect for that cosplay, but he walked by us and was like, oh god. And then when he walked, continued to walk by us, <laughs> I saw the back of him. That dude was covered. From head to toe in back sweat, and it was the mm. grossest it was thing. a pool of back sweat, and his his wedgie was like perfect, like yeah. the outline of his ass 
was <laughs> as if he was naked and painted green instead of wearing something. It was just complete high definition ass right I'm, there. I'm glad my wife missed that one. I try to protect her from the underbelly <laughs> of things. See, I went, the only other convention I've ever she gone was to besides busy this being, one. Get, getting dressed up as a children's character from a heartwarming, charming comedy cartoon. Oh no! <laughs> Only other con I went to was Otakon, which is an anime convention, and that was just yeah. a parade of failure. So this was like a welcome, a welcome change. <laughs> Any place that doesn't have a sign that says "Please wash regularly" is okay by me. There was a cloud we kept seeing over and over and over <laughs> again, no matter everywhere. where we went. Cloud strife was there. Also, the <laughs> hamburger. The hamburger. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! He just kept showing up, and then like we went to go have lunch great. downstairs, and there's a McDonald's down there, and he was doing a little photo shoot in front of the McDonald's. That dude was casing that McDonald's. <laughs> he, he was, was just perfect. waiting for somebody to come along and take a picture. It oh, was god. brilliant. It was really oh, good. No. Maybe it was just in it to get free hamburgers. He was probably the only hamburger at the convention. I like when pe- I like when people cosplay <laughs> things that are like not obscure, but something you wouldn't dress up as. No one wants to be the hamburger. <laughs> There's that brave little toaster cosplayer. Oh that my god! Yes, yeah. that was amazing. He was the guy, and he had pretty much the entire cast. The whole yeah. all the props, yeah. carrying mm-hmm. around all the little props with him: the vacuum Which, cleaner, the toaster, the lamp. <laughs> that's gonna be fun on the bus, but yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> There's also that Bebop and Rocksteady with gigantic oh, heads. giant paper mache wow. heads. Giant heads. Were they paper mache? I think they were styrofoam. They were huge. That's all I, I remember. Oh, <laughs> they might were, have been both. There were human versions of them on another day, like a, a different group. Mm. That, that, we that also, were also pretty cool. We also you know, just, saw a gigantic, yeah. whatever, 10 feet tall Frankenberry. <laughs> you remember Frankenberry. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That was, that was like <laughs> not a costume. That was like a... Um, a structure he was in. <laughs> uh, the cos- the cosplay contest was uh, won by a uh, Bioshock Big Daddy that was even larger than that. Oh, I've got to see a picture Lord. of that. You, you described it. Yeah, as... me too. They had to climb a ladder to crown the winner. <laughs> that was amazing. I feel like there should be different categories. Well, there was the bumblebee like that. that was really good. But that yeah. one didn't win, yeah. so I'm curious. The categories are one story, two stories, three <laughs> stories. <laughs> Chicago is the city of big shoulders and everything else. This year I'm <laughs> cosplaying as C2E2 itself. <laughs> <laughs> I have just a bunch of disappointment inside me. <laughs> no, you, you carry around a bucket and you throw in cars and you lose them forever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you just make a you just make a giant novelty lanyard that can stretch around the entire building <laughs> and put the and put a giant novelty pass on the end of it. There was also a Doc Gok there who had like he had the tentacles, but the little tentacle claw things on it were actually spinning, and they were spinning really fucking fast. It's they looked like way to to gouge out a child's eye. Like the bottom two <laughs> tentacles were low enough to the ground that it looks like he could have just smacked a kid upside the head and given them a concussion. They were spinning that fast. <laughs> oh no. Did we see him on Sunday, a.k.a. Children's Day? Yes. yes. He was oh. the day. That was the only day. Like, I saw him because we day. were... As a recipe for disaster. Near the end of the day, Voidberg and I were, like, up top in the little cafe place, and we were just looking down, looking at the cosplayers. And, yeah, the Doc Ock was walking around, and whenever he got near children, he was, like, grasping his tentacles so they would stop <laughs> spinning. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how he got him to do that. I don't know. They were mm. really fast, though. They were going really fast. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably mention the uh, MLP booth with the smuggest motherfucker manning it. Oh, oh my I don't God. remember him. Oh, I, I got. Uh, well, you will remember him once I post the video. Oh, I have man. a nice little intro for you. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> was this when we split nice up on recap. Sunday? I was going to ask what everybody else got up to. Yeah. While uh, the missus and I were uh, going all through Artist Alley and having a grand old time. I've got some adventures from that, but I will listen to your story. Uh, what did we do, Voidberger? We were we were, were looking around yeah. just for stuff in general, I think. Mm-hmm. I was looking for old-ass games to buy, but there were significantly less this year than last year. Nah, we only found, like, one We booth. found We found a, a second booth when we were w- running around, and they had, they had some good games there, but they were all overpriced, and they were all sitting right next to the hentai. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Also, that same booth... Was which, that the brown bag hentai? This yes. baffles me. They had blind bag hentai to buy. Mm-hmm. You would buy 20 or even $30, $30. of brown bags labeled, labeled like bag of love, sexy bag, or bag for two. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> or in wait, s- wait in- hold the fucking phone. Bag yeah. for two? You do know my anniversary's coming up, right? <laughs> yeah. A, a did bag you, for- Did you plan anything for what? anniversary? The husband just jiggles his bag like eh. <laughs> <laughs> also there's one we it's didn't see it and stained <laughs> Voiberg and oh. I didn't see it because I think somebody bought it but we saw a picture of it from that Pazuzu on Twitter where the brown bag just said bag of Yuri $20 oh it's a bag of Yuri he was taking great pictures through the whole weekend yeah it, it was like attending the con twice checking his, <laughs> his Twitter feed there is also um, he's good at tweets you should follow him by the way yeah, that yeah. Pazuzu there was um, I, I was walking around with Ironicus and his wife, um, and there was one booth that really stuck out in my memory. It was right around right around when we crept into the uh, the seedier artwork, so to speak. <laughs> there, yeah. there was one that we walked by. And I remember, you know, all the a lot of the folks who owned some of the creepy ones. They looked very very goonish, so to speak. You know, <laughs> use your use your imaginations. And there was one I walked by that was probably the most. Uh, blatant like oh dear god i hope no kids walk by and the person who was manning it and was doing the drawings and stuff was this tiny little asian girl it's just sort of like that is not what i expect because i was just looking at the adjacent ones it just didn't seem to fit (laughs) did you turn to her and she just did a flintstones it's a living thing (laughs) (laughs) were were you around when we went by the uh did did you see the booth that had all the uh topless pinups with like um post-it notes covering the nipples no. <laughs> oh yeah. Post Cause, tits. Because that notes. one's great. Because it's like Wonder Woman cover the nipples, Power Girl cover the nipples, Kermit the Frog cover the nipples. <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait. Was it was that hilarious. The booth? Was that the booth where it was like Wonder Woman and some other female superhero like wrestling each other? It that was does just... not narrow it down, dude. <laughs> oh, no. an artist alley. There was one. Oh, I walked by this one booth and it was so fucking awkward. There were just like a bunch of little kids like pointing at these two like scantily clad superhero women, like really muscular, and they were like putting each other in like stone cold stunners. And like <laughs> the kids are just like, "What, mom, mom? What is that? What are they doing? <laughs> Why are they wrestling without any clothes on?" I saw a little little girl, like maybe like five or six getting towed around by who I presume is her mother, uh, who was dressed up by... God, who was she dressed up as, Chip? Because oh. you saw her, too. Was oh, it, like, yeah. Black Cat or somebody? She was, like, Black Cat or something. Or yeah. something similar to Black Cat, which is a very, very scanty outfit with gigantic heels. Like, huge, huge. stripper heels. <laughs> and just, like, toting around her adorable little kid while she, like, her mom is dressed up like... a fucking like fetish latex spandex model and it's like i don't know how i feel about this <laughs> now honey stay in front of me because if you if i step on your foot i'm gonna break several bones <laughs> stay be- stay in front of me because my ass is too fabulous for you right now <laughs> <laughs> you came out of this body <laughs> and it was never the same again i'll never forgive you <laughs> i was a better cosplayer before you now come on <laughs> But um, yeah, the the my wife and I we we used our time on Sunday just to hit all of Artist Alley, and we uh, found some cool pictures. Got a cool picture or two. Found a book from some guy we never heard of before, and he's really cool. Uh, it's also where they keep the podcasters. I oh, for some they reason keep them. Well, that's weird. They just lock them up there. They keep them in a dark hole. <laughs> time, I guess time for hey, your it's, daily it's a, it's a cheap way to get a booth, you know, is to do it out of Artist Alley. So uh, I met the Cinema Jaw guys and talked about our mutual friends, the Alka Hollywood guys. Cool. Uh, there's also, I learned of another uh, comedic uh, RPG actual play sort of thing. So a competitor for Let's Play the 13th Age, which you, listener, should check out. Uh, but we talked to them for a while and we're actually scheduling... Uh, time for me to show up you know some week when i'm not taking a vacation or going to a pair of concerts and a play or i've got a crazy month ahead of me you're you're a busy man i'm a busy guy (laughs) you're very Mm -hmm. busy in a leisurely fashion but yeah it's a one shot rpg check them out uh they're actually really funny so that that's a 
Uh, they, they were also giving away free uh, dice with like their logo on it. Mm. So oh, that's cute. If I can get cool. free dice, I'm down. What else did we get up to, Chip? We just kind of hung out in that like upper cafe area where there's like good people watching place. Oh God! Oh, you there, almost yes. sat down on somebody's period stain on the seat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, Ooh. that's so much better than my story. Wow! I, Do this, tell. This is just from going, just being a lady. Some I just, I just knew. I was just like, something's tingling. I had a sense. <laughs> 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 It's like, uh oh, I got a bad feeling. I'm gonna look at every seat because I just got a feeling. I know something's gonna be up at one of these seats, so I'm checking the seats. And like, just before we're about to choose a table, I look at the seat. I was, oh no! And just a perfect little stamp oh. of, of, a, of a vulva shape, oh, a labia sick majora, in a, in a in a brownish red stamp, uh, right yeah. in the place where yep. a brownish red stamp would appear. Well, if a spandex laden lady had her time of the month at the worst possible time at a convention while wearing spandex. And Aww. I thought, oh my god, that poor girl. And then secondly, I was like, we're not sitting here. I'm <laughs> cosplaying as Aunt Flo. Oh, god. <laughs> Aww. Uh, I just feel bad. bad. Yeah. Mm. Almost sat on a period stain, but we didn't. So happy ending for us, at least. <laughs> we didn't. And then yeah. we got ice cream afterwards, but they only had one flavor left. Oh, yeah. And you liked it more than I did. <laughs> Well, I, I was hungry because I, I eat every three hours like a toddler now. I know, yeah. So, I eat anything. <laughs> that's, I I guess that's sort of the end of the day for us, right? Did it, do we have any other reminiscences? Oh, we, we wanted to and we didn't get to. There was a 3D scanning booth where you can get yourself oh, 3D yes. printed. We wanted to put Chip in there with his keyblade in a totally cool pose and and get a 3D picture, a 3D figure of him but we forgot to do it i wonder how much that, that would cost i think we I saw know. it at its best because when we walked by we saw a pair of tron legacy cosplayers in there which is perfect oh, yeah. <laughs> didn't you say it focused a really long time on the girls oh rear? yes <laughs> oh yes it did above they all did. the maps <laughs> 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 they were getting a five-dimensional image they were scanning so hard. Backing up to external hard drive. Let's do a second external pass. External hard drive. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. You could be Brian Posehn. Boom. I know, I could. Gee, this, you're this, getting Tron over going, here. this Tron lady's going in my spank bank. Everybody, this is what I'm doing to this woman. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? So that's when he all sort of split up to go home, and then we did, uh, well, home slash uh, hotels, and then we did our post interviews. Oh yeah, uh, we did. yeah, the, yeah. This is we we used all of the uh, user, well, all the viewer submitted questions that we drew from a hat at the end of uh, the panel. Instead of just doing that, we did all of them to camera in uh, Camox. Uh, a uh, hotel room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't drink the water there. They'll charge you four dollars. <laughs> I <laughs> fell for that trap. <laughs> oh, you, you sweet summer child. I know. You don't know about hotels. Hey, he was thirsty. That man was sick. <laughs> yeah, but the sink works. <laughs> no, that's true. I'm used. I'm used to the water. I'm used to the bottles of water sitting there being free. But no. no you're supposed to drink from the toilet. Well, usually, knows that. usually the stuff they charge <laughs> you for is inside the refrigerator. But. but <laughs> Refrigerator. How naive you are! It's like, wait a minute, where's her refrigerator? Wait a minute, four dollars balls. I like how I like how they said the ice machine. They said, for your convenience, a single ice machine is situated on the twelfth floor. <laughs> it's on the twelfth floor. The 12th floor. Was, and it was broken the second day. Oh <laughs> the sign I was like, well, fuck you. I remember I was sort of like the first day. I was sort of like, where's the ice machine? I look at it. It says, for your convenience, it's located. I'm like, twelfth? Oh, what? It's located in a different hotel. <laughs> For your convenience, we've put the ice machine in a completely different dimension. <laughs> Good luck trying to find. Ride to the 666th floor. <laughs> it's like a hotel in Night Vale. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we recorded uh, all that stuff in the hotel room, and uh, a, a few of you got introduced to the wild world of uh, boom mics. Mm. Yeah, being that's a grip. A hard, that's a hard job. Yeah, Have you man. listened to that audio? Because I was so nervous that I... I Worked it all up, not pointing <laughs> the unidirectional mic properly. <laughs> no, it was, it, I, I still need to go through all of it, but yeah, it came out pretty good. Okay. I need to uh, color correct all that stuff, but the audio was mm -hmm. definitely there. Cool. Are the audio going, came out really good. Are you going to include 
that one question where I acted like an idiot. Um, yeah, if you if you act like a complete asshole, it, it's in there, and okay. you're getting a highlighted section. Just checking. No. Okay. It, I'm going to show it to you guys. If you like it, we'll keep it. I'm going to edit it in such a way where I think you'll find it funny. But okay, uh, I do know there were one yeah. or two questions I completely bombed on, but I just kind of like, uh, just not leave those in there. I think one of them was slow. Dude, moves, cause I, I think this went first, and he's a hard act to follow because he had every single question memorized practically and all these witty answers. Somebody Jerk. had to put together all this stuff. We were all just glad you weren't, like, dying at that point. <laughs> <laughs> the latter end of chips, I was like, oh, my head. <laughs> there was one point where you were making, like, so many, like, death noises. And I was just, <laughs> I remember having to, like, stop the whole thing. And I, I was just like, are you okay? <laughs> is, is anything going to happen over here? And, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Just tell, yeah, was fun. just tell room service to clean around me. <laughs> <laughs> don't take my wallet yeah. only take four dollars out of the wallet <laughs> room service is always the first to find a body they're used to this oh is it thursday already <laughs> welcome to chicago um. <laughs> don't join a gang it sounds fun but don't do it don't join a gang they don't have dental they don't have a vision plan but the recruitment conference was so intriguing and enticing. I want to see a The More You Know logo flash across the screen, Chip, when you're editing this. All right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Don't join a gang! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so then we all went to, uh, went to dinner after we were accosted by uh, Showtime. <laughs> Good we lord. Were accosted by the, so many fucking people. He is aggressively friendly and that it scares me. That is the most me. aggressively friendly because it's his job. He demanded Man. to know where we're going. I wanted to not and go then, back, but everybody else was everybody else was like, get out the door fast. And I'm like, well, I'm Yeah, dude, I'm I heard stuck. him and I was purposefully getting the fuck out of there. <laughs> so I, he did that to me before. He was like, hey, where are you going? <laughs> it's kind of like that piece of shit, somewhere? that fucking piece of shit with, I was. I had all my shit on. I had all my gear on. I was going out the door, and that motherfucker didn't help me at all. He would. He did not hold the door. He did not like say, "Hey, where are you going?" He just fucking like let me walk out, and I'm like desperately trying to hit the door with like all these fucking tripods. <laughs> like, if you had a look on your face that was telling him you needed a coupon, he would have been right there. <laughs> all right. Yeah, they don't have coupons for like door opening. Motherfucker. <laughs> like as some as someone with social anxiety issues, that is the worst way to interact with me. <laughs> to be friendly, but in such a way that I think you're gonna hurt me somehow. The thing he gave us a coupon for was good though. Yeah. Oh, it was so oh, good. Yeah. Oh, it, it was, was so good we pie. almost got a second one in addition to the free one. We should have yeah. done it anyway. I just we love how he got it. our attention by saying, Hey, where y'all going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Gio, didn't didn't uh, uh, that a similar situation happen to you earlier? Yeah, yeah, there was a homeless dude um, uh, up near where uh, where is it Dearborn and Congress, right around there. There was a dude yeah. on a wheelchair, and when I was um, on Saturday, he when just I was, hangs out there. We saw him like three times. Yeah, when he just I, hangs yeah. out in the bike lane in the middle of the street, and he's got one he's got one arm and one leg. Oh well, well on Saturday I am um, I you know this is. You know, I had a fever and all that stuff, so, like, going to the CVS, which is just, you know, just two blocks over, was sort of like I had to lie there for, like, two hours, be like, okay, I gotta go get medicine, or otherwise this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna improve. So, I kind of went out, and I have my, you know, blinders on, so to speak, just kind of, like, just go there, get it, come back. And he was talking to somebody, and I was crossing over the road, I walked past them, and, you know, when I was about... 15 feet away or so i heard him yell hey white boy and i'm just kind of like nope <laughs> keep on walking that's that's me <laughs> like oh yes sir can i help you <laughs> hey 16 foot python <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was just reminding you like hey you don't have a mirror just remind you're a white boy holy shit i'm pale <laughs> why didn't anybody tell me some sort of nerd or something? I bet you talk about video games on the internet. How was the convention, white boy? <laughs> See, I if, know he you had been there. if he had addressed you as fucking nerd, then you probably would have turned around and given him some money. <laughs> An astute but, um, observation, sir. Here's my money. So many people 
uh, in Chicago were so helpful in such a strange, strangest ways. Like one person who was very, very helpful to Voidburger while we were oh. eating dinner. Oh, wow. God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> who creeped all of us out. <laughs> As that soon as weird. <laughs> oh my god, that was so fucking so weird. So I'm like screwing around on my phone waiting for food, and I just feel something on the back of my neck. And at the, simultaneously, somebody says something in my ear, like right behind me. So I kind of like turn really quick, and I thought maybe there was like a spider on me, and like some person, and some person <laughs> was being a good Samaritan and like shooing the spider off me or something. Because that is the only reason you should touch a stranger. If it's like there's something about to bite them and you are the only person that knows about that. So I assume there's a spider or something on me. And he was just like, oh, your tag was sticking out. Uh, and then everybody at the table popped their tags out as best they could. <laughs> so like, let's see how this works. Double standards. Because they want all this attention that I'm always getting. That dude freaked me out because I, where I was sitting, I was right next to you, but you know, angled a little bit. So this... He was kind of a big dude, too. Yeah, he was big. This big dude just comes out of nowhere, right in my peripheral vision, right behind you. And then your tag's showing. The tag is showing. And tucks oh. the tag in for me simultaneously while informing me. And you, what you do is you inform me, and then I do it. Also, it's like a tag. Who cares? And, oh, yeah, and also, right. who gives a fuck? It's not like your shoe's untied. I don't want you to trip. You, surrounded by these four men, are clearly trying to pick up at least one of them, and you need to look your best. Mm -hmm, obviously. <laughs> and we're all like looking at your tag and just going, fuck that no, shit. No way, I no. Think tag out, I'm done. I think prior to that, we were talking about the butt tomatoes on the wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I pointed that out, and everyone's like, oh, shit. Oh, it is a butt. I did not know there that. Were, there was tomatoes. a mural where there were a bunch of... It was like... It, it was like rolling farm fields, tilled fields, yeah. It's well, like Italy or some bullshit, I don't know. Italy or some just cypress trees, I don't give a fuck. But, and then on the corner, like, way too big, gigantic, and added in as if it was an afterthought, two perfectly spherical butt cheeks of tomatoes, yeah. like, arranged so that they looked exactly like a butt. What was it Chip? Chip tried taking a picture, but it didn't send, and he just kind of left it as is, which is saying "butt tomatoes" on Twitter. I just, I just tweeted the words "butt tomato." I had the picture. I just forgot to attach it. I'm pretty sure I had the picture. I mean, figure it out, Twitter. Yeah. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the actual food, though. It was good. Oh, so good. I really liked Cantina, and I really liked um, Yolk. Those are my two favorite places. Yeah, me too. I, I like really that, like that cookie pizza thing. Was oh, cookie pizza was, was really good. Really, so I really oh, liked. Yeah. I really liked Shoko. I really enjoyed getting multiple free desserts because yeah. we had to wait. Let's on your birthday. <laughs> on my birthday. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Oh god, I'm going past the the yolk pictures, and I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> that was like but, the uh, best French that, toast I've had in a long that night time. With the, uh, with, with the butt uh, tomatoes, this last time we were all together because yeah. the the two you left. Yeah. Does does anybody have more stories they want to share? Um, there was the uh, when I landed at uh, Bush Intercontinental in Houston, I um, I had to get on this little bus because uh, you know, I parked my car at this long uh, you know, this long term parking thing. You just pay for every day you leave your car there, and um, the shuttle showed up outside the airport, and there was a um, just just this one uh, this one girl and myself, and I noticed she had a you know a T-shirt from my alma mater, which is you know not too not too uncommon really in Houston. And you know I'm just kind of just talking with her. She was doing some marathon thing up in Washington, and I'm like, oh, it was a you know she said it was a Nike marathon thing. I'm like, oh, cool. And you know the little shuttle pulls up, and the guy on board. He was hitting on her something fierce the entire time. It was really <laughs> weird and really creepy because we step on board and, you know, when you when you leave your car parked, you, they give you a slip saying about what aisle and where your car was parked so that when you come back, you can give it to these guys and they'll drive to wherever it is and say, here's your car, you know, do whatever. I hand him my slip and then he's like, oh, you two together, where'd y'all come from? And she says her thing, you know, oh, I came from Washington. And I said, oh, I came from Chicago. And the guy did not hear me at all. And the girl says, oh, she hands him a slip and he takes it and he looks at me. He says, so uh, you, you two aren't together? And I said, no. He said, oh, where's your slip? And I said, I already gave it to you. He just kind of stared at me for a few moments. And he looks over the girl and says, so what are you doing up in Washington? <laughs> 
<laughs> and she says, oh, doing a marathon sort of thing for Nike. And he said, Nike? Oh, it's too bad they have all those slaves over there making their shoes. And he goes off on this really <laughs> weird tirade about slave labor. And she's just said, Wait, 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 wait. What was his position on it? Well, he was sort was of like, oh, it's a terrible slave company labor. having slaves making all their shoes. And she's sitting there kind of like, yes, <laughs> now, did, great. did he follow us from the round tables that were giving away the free slaves <laughs> coupons? I, I mean, uh, oh. cards? Well, I gave oh, her a man. few of my free slave coupons. So, you know, she'll probably take them the next Nike thing. <laughs> but it, that, that was just really weird because I thought it was hilarious that a guy completely shut me out. And it was just kind of doing this really, really, <laughs> really bad flirting thing. <laughs> Well, it's, it's good to know that you, you've got some people who are just n- against slavery. It's <laughs> yeah. Does it count as negging if it's against, like, society and capitalism rather than the girl in question? <laughs> <laughs> is, is that still a neg? You're just posturing. Well, you know what, babe? I really hate slavery. You know, I'm going to put it out there. And then yeah. when she turned around, was her tag out? And he was just like, oh, <laughs> fuck this. I'm out. Oh, God, I didn't check. I made a huge mistake. I've got to, I've got to find her and warn her. Tag was out. I love your reaction to that, by the way, Voidberger. When <laughs> you did that, because you went from I, 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 I noticed that you went from like a thinking that he was actually doing something helpful and just automatically responding in a nice way. Oh, thank you. And then you immediately like turn like, wait, what did you just fucking say? He said my tag. <laughs> oh, thanks. I guess. I was Dick. just like, preemptively <laughs> being like, thank you for leaving me alone right now. Is what you're doing. You are about to leave me alone. Thank you for going away. <laughs> the Damn thing it, you man. say when someone mumbles and sounds like generically friendly is just thank you because you're just like, please go away. Your tag Th- was that showing. is like, thank you. Because that means goodbye in girl language. Thanks. <laughs> leave now. Oh, yep. dear. My marriage you don't is wanna, You don't want to say what. You don't want to start a conversation. <laughs> So I like oh, it was an automatic response. I don't even remember how I responded. What did that do? When that dude like fucked off and went somewhere else, did he just like immediately leave the restaurant? Or what, did know. he sit back no, down? No, no, he sat back down. I remember yeah, it being okay. kind he of was awkward because we were loudly talking. The two of yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, he was behind the two. I saw him come up, and as soon as I, I was like dicking around on my phone, and then as soon as he came up, oh, yeah, we, we were, were trying to play uh, GTA, was, the the iPhone. Port. Yeah, the mobile version. Oh God, it was and, so bad. Let's LP that. But um, no, he he went to the bathroom immediately after. He took care of business, and then he came back and sat right behind uh, Voidberger, uh, basically with a, a group of other people. And I remember it being awkward because at that point, I thought he left, and we were l- talking loudly about uh, popping our uh, tags out. <laughs> and I look over, and he's still fucking there, and he's just like, he's with this group of people, but he's not saying anything, and he's just like oh, sort God. of sadly eating pizza. Aww. Dude, you don't tuck in someone else's tag for them. I, I thought he was it's just scary. telling you. I didn't know he actually like took your tag no, and he did it, it for me. Oh, my that's God. God. Yeah. That's so much creepier. I also oh. thought... When it happened, at least, I also thought he was just telling you. And then you're yeah. like, thanks. And then you tucked it in. So you go, he's like, like fuck I'm off. pretty sure he did it for me. I saw his hands. That's why I was kind of, uh, I was kind of like, uh. Ugh. Like, I felt like a tug at the back of me. And like, I don't think the tag was out anymore. Or I don't know. And I was like, what the fuck? He just did it for me. Just in, invaded my space. <laughs> And non-consensually tucked my tag in. <laughs> I just saw him leave my peripheral vision. So I thought the second he did that, he just silently glided out of the, the, the <laughs> restaurant. He's just the tag Avenger. <laughs> I half expected him to, uh, to do that and then just finish it with Milady and then don and like, <laughs> tip his hat. I like to think he straight off the back room thinking, way to go, Chuck. That was cool. <laughs> Chuck. You're such a nice person, Chuck. Mm-hmm. Now to escape out of the bathroom sc- window. <laughs> you didn't scare the shit out of me at all. He also didn't say like, you know, excuse me. He just said your tag is out. No, he just straight up did it. <laughs> yeah, he just did well, it and simultaneously while saying your tag. Well, you excuse, say, excuse me, excuse me for trying your to tag help is a guy out. deal with his crippling OCD. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some people can be so judgmental. So do we want to get? Back to some uh, some bonus topics, uh, LP wise. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, what do we got? Uh, I'm looking at some bullet points that we had to to gla- glance over for time. Uh, let's talk about the the big one that I wish we had gotten to more is effort rewarded. That's that's no. my pick. <laughs> it, a lot of it's <laughs> luck. 
All right, just because done. of how much no. there is. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true of life, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, how many well, people do you know put a ton of effort into stuff and they never get recognized for how much effort they put into it? Yeah. That's, like, universal. There's tons of people out there that yeah. put no work into it and get all the praise. I think it sounds... I think it's going to be sound like a bit of a cop-out as soon as it escapes my mouth. But it really depends on the uh, reward you're looking for. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I just felt so much gratitude to everybody who came and saw us last weekend, you know? Mm-hmm. And... You know, that's really good enough for me, you know? Uh, yeah. A lot of times I see our stuff being held up as the right way to do it, or, you know, the one or one of a handful of good ones. And while I think that's limiting, I can think of more than a handful. I'm, I'm glad to be on your short list, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> no, it's a good point that there there is more than one reward. Like, some people think, like, yo, making it big and getting money and getting... I mean, if, if you're talking about YouTube ad revenue, then I think we could all come down on the side and say, no, it's a, it's a volume game. Mm-hmm. And volume yeah. is, you know, putting out five plus videos a day is, and it, you're, you're not going to make a quality product. You do not no, have, right. no. that's just unless science. You're, unless you're pulling PDP numbers, then yeah, you're, it's really not. But, you know, it, it teaches you how, uh, sort of how to apply those, uh, the, the, putting a lot of effort into something and uh, you can apply that to other uh, er facets of your life. So it's like, you know, if you don't, if you're striving to be the best uh, LP -er, then you're going to strive to be the best at other things. You're going to learn how to do things correctly. You're going to learn a lot about video editing and you're going to be able to apply that to other facets of your life. So it's like, Mm -hmm. are you, are you trying to become the best LP -er, or are you trying to just be the best at something? Mm -hmm. And like, like the work itself can be rewarding. Just getting the videos out and liking the product you've made can be rewarding. Yeah, and like, yeah. you know, even if it's only like 200 people watch the video, it's like, hey, 200 people watch your video. That that's can, that can be rewarding too. And seriously, and like, the most rewarding thing is like, well, for me, I've gotten like emails from people uh, saying that like just like out of the blue and saying like how much they appreciate my videos. Like I was in the hospital for surgery. Yeah, and like. Uh, I, I had your videos and they like kept me distracted from how much pain I was in from the surgery and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, that is like yeah. the most rewarding, yeah. sweetest. There, I've gotten, I never it, know what to I've say gotten, to those. I've gotten messages from like one or two deaf people mm-hmm. saying like, thank you for doing good subtitled LPs. Yeah, yeah. Which yep, makes me, me want to yeah. do, which makes me want to do more subtitled LPs because like, oh shit, like that was like one of the sweetest things that anyone's ever, ever said to me is like, thank you for catering to this demographic that yeah. I wasn't intentionally doing that for. We've actually gotten a couple messages from people who are hard of hearing thanking us for the way we edit our audio because it we're cl- clear enough that even though they're hard of hearing, the, the the audio balances just so that they can still make out what we're saying. Oh, that's cool. I like, yeah. I you never told me about that. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, do they also appreciate the uh, incoming scream warning in that one MGS3 video? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the good old days. I'm sure everybody appreciated that one. <laughs> even though it was really... S- snarky when I put that one. I like how the yeah. warning siren was incredibly loud. <laughs> it was very loud and there were children <laughs> screaming. And then I made it very quiet. <laughs> but, uh, come on, you, you had a topic that didn't even get in on the, uh, on the slides that sounded good. You were talking about it just before we hit record. I forget it. <laughs> me oh, no. too. I was hoping you wouldn't have. Uh, let me let me think. Uh, Damn. It sounded really good. Oh, it was about um, yeah. So the future of LP. One of the things that I was uh, uh, I was interested in hearing everyone's ideas about is uh, how uh, the new consoles are actually having yeah. like, you know Twitch and uh, UStream services put onto the consoles, and it seems like coming from these big companies they're saying hey we embrace let's play we embrace live streaming you know uh what do you guys think about that like is that is that good for lp is that bad i mean i think it depends on how those decisions pan out in the long run and uh it's also important to note the difference in in goals between say a hardware manufacturer like sony like twitch built into ps4 or uh, a game publisher that uh, any of the number that want to crack down on LPs uh, or at least, you know, claim their ad revenue as their own, 
which they have a legal right to. Um, right. It's weird because, like, um, with the PS4 specifically, there are um, they put dev controls into the streaming kind of, so it's like even though they're letting you stream the game, uh, devs can at any point code in bits of the games that are unstreamable. Huh. The ending cutscene for Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, if you try and stream that, the stream turns blank and it'll mm. say censored, will not let you stream Whoa. it. Whoa. Oh. I wonder if yeah. that was put in as like some sort of uh, like a, a, an agreement, you know, a, a bargaining negotiation back yeah. when they were building it just to, yeah, to get was... publishers on board. I don't know if... Um, the Xbox One does that too with the streaming, but yeah, the PS4 has like censorship features in there, and like the the intention, what they says, you know, some games might do that to prevent uh, spoilers for later parts in the game. Like if the game leaks early, which happened to Ground Zeroes, definitely there were tons of people who get that game really early for PS4, and so even though they were streaming it, the ending could not get spoiled by people who were streaming from the PS4 because the whole thing just got censored. Then again, what if Kojima just was really, like, he felt a lot of shame for that ending. Maybe he was just <laughs> yeah. trying to hide it. On second thought, guys, don't stream this part. <laughs> you know what? We're just going to cut out the entire ending. Let's just put in a few yeah. pictures of what I had for dinner last week. Uh, <laughs> wow. the, the deja vu um, mission is required to be streamed, but nothing else is able to be streamed. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, and it's like both with the Xbox One and the PS4, if you have the, well, you have the Kinect if you have the, the Xbox One, or, but if you have the PlayStation camera for the PS4, both of those streaming things just put a scare cam right in there. Yeah. Right in the top right. Mm. Automatically. Can you turn it off? Your corporate yes. mandated. Okay. You can turn it off with the PS4. I don't know Your about the Xbox. corporate suggested than a scare cam, yeah. I don't know about the Xbox One because the Kinect is mandatory right now. Mm. So, I mean, you can turn it off, but I don't know if it's mandatory to stream or not. I don't know. Maybe you can turn it off by just saying Xbox Xbox off. Xbox turn off and then everything just shuts down. Oh, no. What about um, people having a lot of sex in the scare cams? Uh, That's more of a PS4 thing because (laughs) there's... There's a game called Playroom that is a whole bunch of, like, interactive things with a camera. There are all these tiny little robots, and you can, like, smack balls around and, like, draw stuff on the screen. It turns into these little physics objects that the robots will push around. There's, like, little mini games. But people figured out that they could just, like, brush all that shit to the side with their hands, and then they would just start hosting talk shows and stuff by streaming, basically just streaming their living room. And there's, like... <laughs> Like, if you go on right now, because it's, it's almost midnight, there's probably going to be a dude on right now on the Ustream portion of, of Playroom who is just streaming his conspiracy sh- talk show and also probably ripping on a guitar for a half hour. Or ripping on a bong. Yeah, there there's, like, streams. There's, like, a 24-7, like, grow shop stream where some dudes is growing <laughs> weed. Nice. Um... <laughs> I've seen people, like, have tons of... They've been, like, partying in their basement and just have a whole bunch of guns laid out on their table. There's one time there's just a really angry guy just waving his gun in front of the camera. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, but, yeah, apparently when that stuff... People first discovered that stuff, there were people just, like, fucking on camera. So, I imagine the the idea from uh, uh, the Xbox and PlayStation camp for this is... Mm-hmm. Just recruit a bunch of people to make free ads for for your content, right? Yeah, yeah, really easy I, word of mouth. If right. this is what people are using it for, I don't think it's going to have legs. I. What's funny though is uh, one of the dudes, head dudes of the the gaming division of Sony, people were you know articles were being published about that stuff and like people having sex and all that. And um, uh, which guy was it? Shu Yoshida, I think. I think that's his name. He was uh, tweeting about it, and he was just tweeting like, yeah, I was watching some uh, shirtless guy in, like, Missouri just playing his banjo for a while. It was pretty cool. And that was it. He's completely approving (laughs) of people doing weird shit with it. (laughs) You know, just watching. Nothing Mm -hmm. weird. (laughs) I, I mean, it's it's not only uh, Let's Play as ads, but I guess it's more streaming as community building, so I can see why they'd yeah. still be interested yeah. in it when it's not gaming related. I think, I honestly don't know, I, I cannot, I don't have a prediction, but I think in two years it will be clear, because yeah. things are going to shake out, and 
somebody's going to make a decision and then we'll know. Mm-hmm. Mm. My answer to your question is wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like with um, game de- some game devs also like, re- you know, just recruiting like some of the bigger YouTube less players to, to demo their games and all that. Like PewDiePie did that demo video of... um. All of those horror games? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. The specific, specifically, a big AAA game. The uh, at VGX. Well, yeah, VGX and separately, it was what is it called? Dying Light. It's daylight. It's the, it daylight. Is it daylight? It's the no, it's the I, game that's d- Dead Island, made by the same oh, people, that. but they Dying don't call Light. it Dead Dying Light. But they don't call it Dead Island because it sucked. <laughs> um, yeah, it's they like gave him Dead Island. Yeah, they gave yeah. him a, a preview build of that game, and he did a let's play it. And like the VGX thing on Spike, on uh, when they announced like a game or something, and it was terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, like they had him as a guest on there. Not really. They just played highlights of one of his videos of him screaming over this game. Are you like, ever gonna post that? Because we like retsued that. I love basically. how Joe McHale was kind of like gonna really. Care. That's it. <laughs> I yeah. loved him in that. People there, were upset uh, about Joe McHale. Like for the most part, he was funny. He, he made a few uh, gaffes. He fucked yeah. up three, two or three times, maybe four times. But other than that, I think he was a positive influence. <laughs> I like how the other guy was like, <laughs> "Yeah, morale. I'm looking forward to all these next gen games." Oh yeah, which ones? Uh, oh, oh, all of them. No, go ahead, name one. Name one in particular. <laughs> um, next up, <laughs> Titanfall's gonna be sick and dope, y'all. <laughs> flying robots, I guess. Commercial. Um, but I've always yeah, thought, like... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was, was going to say, like, we wanted to put the... Because we, like, uh, retsued over it when it was get, getting streamed live. and uh, But nobody was allowed to post anything about it on uh, YouTube, any parts of VGX, because it was getting yeah. copyright claims from Viacom or whoever the hell's in charge of that stuff. But I'm wondering if it's, like, you know, it was, like, half a year ago almost, right? Yeah. So it's like, does anyone care? Can we put that up now? Because it's pretty I'll funny. Tr- I'll try. <laughs> I still had that recording. The best part was revealing Cranky Kong, and I had all those Cranky Kong gifts prepared <laughs> ahead of time. Yes. Um, uh, uh, we love the Cranky Kong. What was I going to say? The future of Let's um, Play is Cranky Kong. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be in everything. Uh, Where are the Cranky Kongs? No. Cranky Kong for Smash. <laughs> Cr- oh, yeah. Cranky Fall. Yep. Sequel mm-hmm. Cranky Fall. Exclusive, only on Xbox One. I can't wait um, for the Cranky Kong. Cranky Kong uh, Origins. Cranky Kong. <laughs> Cranky Kong. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the Kong I want to party with. That's my, that's my fan character. <laughs> you know, that's gotta be real. Someone on DeviantArt must have done that. I'm looking be it up Kong. now. There's Kronky Kong, and then there's Chronic the Hedgehog. So. <laughs> it's actually just some um, sort of a, um, uh, a little DJ table he's rapping on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did have another uh, question uh, if, we're, if we yeah. wanted to talk about it. Have you guys heard about uh, Daylight and how it's incorporating, like, if you're playing, uh, if you're streaming it on Twitch, your your Twitch, the people you're streaming with can actually, like, influence yes. the game? Oh. So, there's actually another game on PlayStation 4 already that does this. Oh, what um, is it? Oh, man, I wish I could remember what it was called. I might... It was a... It was a game that was made for the PS3. It was, like, a, a top-down... Well, like, isometric, top-down-ish um, twin-stick shooter... That's also about zombies. It's really bad. Uh, they made it a PlayStation f- Plus free game uh, for the PS4, but it had extra streaming stuff in it. So people who are watching, uh, whoever's streaming that game, uh, they're like random zombies in the game will take like viewer names and putting them on top of their heads. So like you killed this viewer or whatever. That's whatever. Uh. Um, but there's also other stuff where... Are they where... immediately banned from the stream if they die? <laughs> no, oh, I wish. Damn it. <laughs> um, they don't have control, like direct control over the individual zombies that they're named after or whatever. But uh, there's a whole bunch of other like viewer participation stuff that's basically like, hey, want to give this guy a power up? What if, you know, does anybody want to vote and have like more zombies spawn in? And that's usually what everybody votes is just spawn as many zombies as possible. <laughs> right. Make vote it really with hashtag difficult. power ups. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, there's like some weird voter uh, like uh, interactivity that stream uh, viewers have you know, with that game. I, I like this because uh, I don't know. It seems like a really interesting design space that no one's taken advantage of. But also, it seems inspired by like Twitch plays, 
but yeah, they, it yeah. must have been in development before that, so it, probably, it, it's something it, people are thinking about. Yeah, probably, but when that game came out for PS4, it came out like a week after Twitch Plays Pokemon got really big. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And that's an interesting, like, whole field of Let's Play. I mean, that is that, like, the first true, like, let's all play? Like, everyone gets together and plays a game, and everyone has, like, a say in playing the game? I suppose so. Maybe uh, the most literal the, the, one, at most least. Most literal. I mean, the, yeah. the, the first one on that scale, there's there's always, hey, vote for uh, what yeah. we do in Oregon Trail, yeah. but... yeah. yeah. Well, I guess, but there but wasn't it, any direct control. Right. So we like, gotta change like the sub so. name now. Let us all play. <laughs> I thought we were gonna talk about like salad and shit in the in the con. Like, I, don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, random thought I've had is like with some companies giving like PewDiePie preview builds of the games to show off, um, or like the Game Grumps had like a thing a couple years ago where they. Uh, it was like EA did this. I don't know if they're still doing it, but they had this program where YouTubers could get a preview copy of the game or something and let's play it. And they had all these guidelines. Yeah, of what, they had those right, rules. Yeah, yeah don't you could show, show this, glitches. Please show that. Yeah. yeah, don't show glitches. Don't speak negatively. And then you would get a higher like uh, uh, revenue for the ads on that specific video for that game. Um, but I. I have gotten a couple emails from a couple game devs, like smaller ones, sending me codes for their games, like, hey, why don't you try, you know, let's play this, whatever. And I've always struggled with the idea of, like, do I do this or not? Because, like, Gaijin Games very consistently sends me codes for, like, all of their BitTrip games. Oh, man, and I paid for those. (laughs) Um, (laughs) We got, I, a long time ago, I got a code for an indie horror game, which I actually, I should probably check out now, um, because maybe it's funny. Um, it looked like a Cry of Fear-esque type thing. Oh, um, those are always delicious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got a... I can't remember the name of the developer. The the people who do the Sniper Elite games, the games where you can shoot Hitler's testicle in slow motion. <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed they, to say, but I love those. Those games are cool. Um, but they sent me, not too long ago, they sent me a code for one of the really old games they developed that just recently got put on good old games. Um... And they sent me a code for that, and I'm like, do I do I want to show these or not? And it's like, I always feel like sometimes I wouldn't mind showing off a dev's game early if it was something I was really into and I was going to show off anyways. Like, yeah. if Platinum Games sent me something, like, right off the bat, I would pick that up. And yeah. it's like, why haven't they done that yet? They've actually, I know they've seen my videos now. One of the Platinum dudes follows me on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Just ask him. And we got they put never on the, uh, the Konami Facebook page. Yeah, they never explain their games. I'll explain for them. <laughs> just ask them. Just do it. Yeah. Uh, I know um, super, just be like, hey, super I'm interested in, in this he, thing. Uh, he, oh, does he? Yeah. Uh, but oh. like the same conditions you said. Uh, the last one he did was a, he got a preview of a game. Uh, they mm-hmm. gave it to him for free in exchange for, like, he, he put up subtitles saying where they could order it. And he, okay. he just gave his honest, unvarnished opinions and said, yeah, this is a game I was looking forward to play anyway, so I'm glad I had the yeah. chance. I feel like I would be okay with doing that as long as there were not restrictions right. and I could mm-hmm. just say what I actually felt about it. And then I should probably just pick up those codes. They didn't have any restrictions on them. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Oh, shit, what was I even going to say? I lost my either, thought. Either Damn way, it. well, it's um, advertising. It is. They wouldn't have gotten either one. The, the game I'm thinking of specifically is Fract OSC. Yeah. Oh, now I know what I was going to say. Um... I feel like I wouldn't mind doing it as much also if I was doing it for an indie game or a small game. Right. Rather than, mm-hmm. like, getting a big AAA thing, like, hey, show off the new Call of Duty, Snoop Dogs, and this one, brah. And it's like, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Everyone's going to buy that anyways. And, right. I mean, they're, they're also the people that are most embracing of LP, even on its own terms, you know, not just yeah. uh, mm. video game talking. Here you go. Then again, if you want us to show off your shitty fucking Russian MMOs <laughs> then <laughs> like I we got back from the uh, from the whole con and I, immediately I saw in my inbox on YouTube actually I think it was during the con but I only checked my emails after I got back there's this fucking Russian dude and he's like hey I saw your videos I want you to do two let's plays and a review of this game that's coming to New England and I'm like 
Uh, I'm not there, but okay. <laughs> the thing is, he's only a fan of YTR. I don't understand it either. <laughs> oh, that's a whole other thing. I gotta. I f- still need to figure out what the hell Ubisoft's doing with our. Uh... Oh, that's right. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. We got a. <laughs> I, actually, I don't think we should talk about that. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. an NDA thing. I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, they. I didn't sign anything. Um, oh. So. Well, yeah, they it, still might want it to be a surprise. It's oh. it's for. Also, it's for a game that hasn't been talked about much yet, so... Which looks really good. It looks cool. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want to play it, but anyway. You guys, it's like we're gaming journalists or something. Actually, what's really <laughs> funny is uh, the, the emails I get from Gaijin Games, uh, the codes and stuff, and also they send me press releases and stuff. At the bottom, there's like this little FAQ, and like one of the, the very first questions is, why am I getting this email? And it says, you are a considered a part of the gaming, gaming press. And I was like, yeah. oh, all right. Sweet. You can go to E3. Doesn't it give you the warm and fuzzies? <laughs> I have enough qualifications to get into E3 probably. Do well, you know, I, I want to go to E3. You want to go to E3? You I, go got, to E3? I yeah. got the whole press badge thing uh, going to C2E2 because of my YouTube channel. Like they, I was yeah. allowed to be a cover it as a member of the press because of my YouTube channel. So it's like, it's interesting. Do any, Next Goon Meet can be at E3. Do any of us consider <laughs> ourselves parts of the gaming press? Do we think that LP is a part uh, of the gaming press? If so, it's enthusiast press. Which is, to be honest, most of gaming press. Mm-hmm. Because most of them are so invested in it that, you know. I'd say yes, just because the line can get so fuzzy, I wouldn't know how to draw it right. Yeah. yeah. So you mm-hmm. might as That's well. Fair. Yeah. Though I think, I don't, I don't know, it's, uh, and there's, that plays into the whole, and a whole other issue because of, you know, we, we are, we're always contending with, um, uh, uh, copyright infringement and it's like well why is that happening if you're we a member of the press we wouldn't have to do that because we've got you know the ability to you know, recover anything and mm-hmm. and basically make money off of it i mean i know w- w- what total biscuit does that i think he does like little previews of stuff i think so. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. wtf is yeah but it, because we're covering the whole game, then it's considered like a copyright infringement. So it, it gets into a gray area. But uh, mm. I don't know. So I've seen some Let's Plays that are like w- amalgamations of like all sorts of media and like turn turns a game into like sort of a collage of the whole like genre. And it's it's interesting. And like, to see. I mean, like your your homecoming Let's Play is like a choose your own adventure, more interactive than any other Let's Play I've seen. Let's Play. Aw, thank you. Everybody watch it. It is incredible. It's, it's no, probably, yeah. no, don't, <laughs> don't, 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 don't listen. I, I really wish more people would have followed that lead and like uh, in- integrated like the structure of YouTube, the, the advantages there, uh, the, the ways you can mess with the video that they build in. Yeah. That's, that's a great technology to make use of, but it's, I remember nobody does it. I remember mm-hmm. there was some game after seeing, I mean, it, well, that's effort. Yeah. It's, it's tricky, <laughs> you know? After but seeing Kamek's brilliant. Let's Play, I remember playing with the idea of doing something similar with a game. I can't remember what game it was. But um, the problem I had was, like, the effort part. And it wasn't so much the effort, but more making tons of YouTube annotations is tedious as yes. shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. Something even as simple as, like, uh, going into your description and providing timestamps for this is when this happens. Yeah. yeah. Just... And then even that little bit could go so far for for just helping out your viewer. In a and lot not of cases. only that, but like I was also doing the the ver- the autoplay versions for Blip, which was just like talk about tedious. Like I was doing oh, the YouTube God, annotations, yeah. and then the other is it got you are to a crazy point. man. Well, I mean, I think that if you have crazy ideas, just just do them. Mm-hmm. Like if you like, have I've, a lot of crazy <laughs> awesome ideas. <laughs> Well, hey, if like anyone wants them. You can't, you can't them. stop. A lot of crazy ideas. You, <laughs> like, you, still, you really need to see, seek some help over this stuff. <laughs> I Probably, yeah. I mean, I've still got so many frig- I was talking to you, uh, Giop, about... Uh, because while everyone else was all out having fun, me and Giop were just, like, chilling <laughs> in, like, the fucking... The area that we were originally going to film the interviews in. And we were just, like, you know, chatting about stuff, chatting about work and all that good stuff. And I, I, I casually mentioned the idea that I have been kicking around of doing, like, this um, collaborative Let's Play where it's sort of like uh, Mystery Science Theater, how they did, like, table... Uh, uh, what did they call it? Uh... Table, table reads? Not table reads, but the, uh, home running, home writing, where you basically contribute to um, the riff 
by submitting your own jokes. And then basically what would happen is everyone would submit these jokes and they would get rated and the people mm -hmm. uh, get points based on who, you know, who gets more consistent jokes, funny jokes in the videos and they like sort of level up. So it's like a game on top of a game, hmm. but it's all for the, the purpose of making really funny commentary, sort of like MST3K. Hmm. over top of a game and you know it, you would get credited like you're a little icon if you would pop up next to the riff that you have as a subtitle and then you know hmm. doing something like that um i thought I've, I've i've been kicking that around for like a year at least hmm. i really want to do that one mapping it out logistically and then there's the sounds other tricky one. as hell though yeah it's it would be tricky but you know we made youtube hmm. reacts work yeah and I, uh, you know yeah. that was that was I like that you say surprise. We. I, that was you. That was you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a group thing. It's it's not all me. I mean, it's yeah, but a you, lot you chronically me, but... underplay how good you are at stuff. <laughs> oh my god, this is turning into an internet. It's not all Bob. It's only like ninety nine point nine percent Bob. All right, when uh, people when when you see the uh, the post interviews and the uh, um panel itself, you're going to wonder why he, uh, Kamok isn't in those. It's because no matter how hard we begged, he, he refused. <laughs> yeah, don't blame anyone but me. I, I was the person who was just like, no, I don't want to be in the you give yourself credit for. <laughs> yeah, if it's, if it's good and, and makes me feel good, I immediately distance myself from it. <laughs> well, also Fine, because piece he, of shit. <laughs> well, because Bob oh, bent you. over backwards to do a lot of stuff, we were kind of like, well, we can't really force him into it if he really doesn't want to, so... <laughs> He basically said, no, 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 and he shut the camera he off. So like, we well, were like, hey, you should do an interview, well, too. No. It's so like, you turn off camera, how camera works. Well, okay, <laughs> for one thing, I didn't know what I was going to say because I had not prepared at all, and everyone I else didn't. was doing, like, hilarious jokes and shit. I and didn't I was prepare gonna, at all. I was just going to bomb miserably. I think Ironicus was the only person who prepared at all for that. Like, for one or two. <laughs> like, the, the one that but, was um, directly for me. God. But, God, yeah. you're witty. Yeah, you, you were you were shooting from the hip that whole time. Fuck. It was really convincing. Oh my God. <laughs> it was fucking rapid fire, too. I was like, holy well, shit. I wanted to get done so I could get you guys a pizza, all right? Jesus. Yeah, and that's that was another thing. That was another reason why I, I felt like I couldn't do it, because we were just running out of time. <laughs> yeah. It was like 20 minutes per person. Yeah, it, it was nine pages yeah. of questions. So and then was I was afraid that Ironicus's arms were going to fall off if he held that boom for one more interview. <laughs> I have noodle arms. Noodles are light. I could have. I could have. <laughs> held it i and i didn't hold that boom mic at all that night I don't, I don't know you look pretty comfortable sitting on that uh futon I really, thing i was really comfortable on that futon <laughs> it just took off his shoes and was just chilling while everyone else <laughs> uh -huh. but the main reason i wasn't in the convention the lp panel video was because someone had to man that camera so yeah. mm -hmm. you know don't you know i, I it was uh you, you, you got yeah. an intro you got a slide that's yeah and i'm i am grateful for okay. that thank you though oh. i think that that confused people <laughs> well it says right on the slide he's the one with the camera <laughs> yeah yeah that, that was true i noticed that afterward uh well this has been going for uh <laughs> two and a half hours and a half? so does anyone have yeah. any final thoughts uh if anyone from Platinum Games is listening to this, I'll show your games off, and maybe more than 200 people will buy. No, I'm going to cut that part out. <laughs> Send me your games. And also... No, you, no just do it more presenterly. you got to sell it. Put on your business voice. If anybody at Platinum Games would like to enter into a partnership that I think will be mutually beneficial, please contact us. Also, yeah. Giant Bomb, please hire Chip. GiantBomb.com. I am sending you a tape right now. It's a mixtape, is it? Yeah. IGN, if you're listening to this, I would like to get hired by you so that I can just yell at everyone in your fucking offices. <laughs> also, if anybody up in the Chicago area wants to see a python, I know where you could find one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Freezing. My place. Oh, yeah. I just want to make sure to plug Lemon Drop. I want to plug <laughs> that white boy. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Ooh. So many to choose from. This at is a, a CYOA podcast. <laughs> oh my. Uh, I want to thank Drunk Wolverine. <laughs> I want to thank and Label Napkin guy. Elf. <laughs> Napkin Elf. Napkin Elf, he was nice. He's great. Uh, um, I, want to... I want to thank those people who were making out five feet away from me while I was eating pizza. Oh, that was didn't adorable. You say you saw, didn't y'all say you saw like Powerpuff Girls like smoking cigarettes outside or something? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> they were right outside. <laughs> right next to my dad. 
<laughs> just like the thing of Powerpuff Girls sitting out there saying, uh, fucking nerds are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh i'd like to thank everybody who came out to see us um and i would like to thank chips keyblade and you know all the people who really wanted to but couldn't i mean it's only one city it's a great big world i understand i want to thank general ironicus and his lovely wife snow yes. beast for hosting us and showing us all the good food and letting us sleep at their apartment for a while there mm-hmm. they are mm-hmm. awesome and that was the sweetest thing while, while everybody else is pitching themselves for jobs, hey, if you are hiring for literally anything in Chicago, uh, or you have a Chicago <laughs> podcast, apparently I'm going on all of them. Scattershot, man. Just get that shotgun out there and fucking blow like it. Like you just dump business cards into where they kept all the podcast people. That little hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that shit hurts. Next year, that's what I'm doing. I would like to thank everyone for being totally chill and cool and awesome, and I had a great yeah. time. Yeah. Thanks for not being weird and being the opposite of weird. I am cool. so happy the people who came all ended up being nice people. Yeah. Thank I was, you for. I was for, bracing for there to be like one weird dude. Except for, <laughs> but there except for those two there people wasn't. who left early. I know who you are. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just hoping they had a schedule conflict. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank that guy that tucked my tag in. That was very, what would I have done without you? <laughs> that you tag would have me. been out all night. You would have been so embarrassed. Thank you so much. And they say chivalry's my tag dead. In. Without my consent, <laughs> that was so creepy. sweet of you. For scaring the shit out of me while I was hungry and waiting for food. It was a good thing you did, not a bad thing you did. <laughs> the opposite of bad. All right, everybody, that was our uh, C2E2 recap, our events, uh, some stuff we didn't get to in the panel but wish we did, and all sorts of other fun times. I hope you liked it, as well as all the other content we produced for that great weekend in May. See you next year? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know.